pictures we have. Um, it's taking place in West London. This is happening in West London. It's, there is an evacuation process underway. We have no word on the number of people who are in that building, no word on the injuries, but as soon as we get any information on that, we will bring it to you. Um, if you want to keep up to date with what London Fire Brigade is saying about it, their Twitter feed is being updated regularly. Um, They've had two tweets about it. About 35 minutes ago, they tweeted and said that they're currently attending a fire. And you can have a look um, on their, on their um, Twitter feed. It's just south of Kensington Aldridge Academy and the NCS Trust. And then there's Lancaster Green. And then that's where that building is, if you know the area. If you don't, it's in West London. It's near the Westfield Shopping Mall, near Notting Hill and Lancaster Gate. We are keeping an eye on what is happening there, but we are going to move on. Oh, no. Okay, we're waiting to hear from someone who is on the scene. So until we get that person on the phone, let me just give you an update. If you're just joining us, good morning. Welcome to you. There is a fire in West London, a huge fire, as you can see. These are the latest pictures out of West London. Police were called at 1.16, so about two hours ago. Um, and they were called to reports of a large fire, as you can see, at a block of flats in the Lancaster West Estate. It's W11, if you know your London postcodes, W11. So officers, the London Fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Service, um, they're currently at the scene and there is an evacuation and there's an evacuation process underway. We have a witness who's on the phone. His name is Rio. Rio, good morning to you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Morning, Rio. Thank you so much for talking to us. Can you just explain where you are in relation to this fire and what you can see? I'm directly opposite in the building, opposite the building. Um, so, yeah, I can... A lot of fire and it's spread over to the other side. The building's completely gone. The building is completely gone, Rio? Yeah, so, like, it won't survive it, basically. Where, where were you when it broke out? Where were you when you realised what was happening? I was in my kitchen at the time and I looked out the window because I heard like smoke alarms going up in the background. And then I saw yeah, the whole um, like, right side of the building was on fire. And what, I mean, how close are you to that building, Rio? Um, Just I'd give us a about... sense of the geography and how high are you in relation to that building because it looks quite high. I'm about... The lower end, maybe like 12, 10 buildings up, I mean, compared to maybe about 300 metres from the building. 300 metres, OK. So what time was that when you saw the fire? That was about maybe two hours ago or so. So what has been happening since then? Did you come down as soon as you saw the fire? Um, no, I, I stayed inside for quite some time until um, I went out for a little walk and everything got blocked off. There's um, like fire brigades on my road. Um, police, ambulance, everything. And tell, tell us a bit more about that building, if it's in your neighbourhood. I mean, you must know what that building is. It's an apartment building, um, is yeah, it? It's a, um, yeah, it's a block of flats so, that like, people live there. And um, as the fire was um, going on, I could see built people in the left side of the building still in there. So I don't think they were aware that the fire was going on, because it was all on the other side. So can you get anywhere near the building, or there's a cordon in place? Um, yeah, everything around there is blocked off. OK, and so can you see any people who've come down from that building, any people who've been evacuated? We've heard from the police that an evacuation process is underway. Yeah, everyone was, when I saw them evacuated, um, I can't see them anymore. Um, they've taken well, they've moved from where they were stationed before. OK, do you have any idea where those people have gone? Um, no, no, I didn't see. The London Fire Brigade are saying that there are 40 fire engines two, and 200 firefighters on the scene. Have you seen that, that, that number of cars and that number of people there? Um, there's 45. Hmm. I won't say there's that many, but there is um, at least maybe 10, 15 that I can see around there. Ria, just, explain, just describe what you can see um, in terms of the building. The latest pictures we have show a huge fire engulfing the entire thing. What, is it, what stage is it at now? Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same. And it's spreading, it's, so it's going down. I'm on the left side of the building. Um, that wasn't that much affected at the start. It's um, slowly going down the building. 
Do you have any idea how many floors, how tall that building is? Um, I, I think it's 24. 24, did you say 24? Yeah, 24. Okay, so the people who were evacuated, they've disappeared, you don't know where they are? Yeah, they've disappeared, I, I can't see them anymore. Okay, but you can still see um, fire brigade and um, firefighters around? Yeah. Okay, so just tell us again, Rio, you were in your kitchen when this happened? Yeah, I was in the kitchen at the time. Um, I heard like the smoke alarm um, going off right in the distance. And because the sound was annoying me, I looked out the window. And then um, that's when I noticed that the building was on fire. How fast did it spread, Rio? Um, it did take some time. Um, and then they were spraying it. Um, so that was helping maintain it. But at the moment, it's just got out of control. And they can't get high enough. Well, well that's what I was... That's what I was going to ask. How are they trying to get higher than uh, however far they can reach with their trucks? Um, they're not. Um, it's literally, they're just spraying as high as they can get at the moment. So that's why the whole chop is um, spread, because they haven't been able to stop it. And so when you came out, you said you came out when you went for a walk. Um, how many hours yeah. after, was, after um, it started was that? And that was at least, well, I only got back about 10, 15 minutes ago. So, um, so, Ria, when did you say that you saw people on the other side of the building? That was at least an hour ago. That was way before I went um, for a walk. But so the, um, so when it started to spread on the other side, I started to see lights going up. Like, people had actually left, and then all the lights on that side are off now. So when you first saw it, when you, when you were in your kitchen and you first saw it, was it on one side of the building, or where was it in terms of yeah, where...? Yeah, it was on um, one side of the building, and um, the part that is um, spread over to now, um, that part was fine and unaffected, and there was loads of people still in their houses at the time. But, um, yeah, the fire has completely um, taken over of that part, and it's still spreading down to the other flat. And was there a sense of panic when you came out onto the street and everyone was, um, had been taken out of that building? Um, I didn't see anyone who was in that building. Um, everyone who's out on the street, um, when I was out there, um, I think people who live on the roads or in the area. Okay, Ria, can you give us a sense of the area? You said you live about 300 metres from that building. Um, what is that area like? We've been saying it's near Notting Hill, Holland Park, near Westfield, um, the Westfield Mall. Is it a residential area? What are the other buildings um, around it like? The around here is very residential. It's a really quiet, peaceful area. And do you know most of your neighbours? I mean, do you think you know people in that building? Um, I don't um, actually know anyone in that building. OK. OK, well, Rio, thank you very much. We're going to leave it there, but thank you very much for talking to us. Before you go very quickly, Rio, what can you see right now? Um, Fire is getting a lot worse, and there's a lot of smoke it's out of control. And in terms of around the building, what's happening around the building? Um, there's a lot of activity with um, people moving around, watching um, at the fire brigades and stuff, so, like, all stationed on my road. Thank you very much, Rio. We really appreciate you talking to us on Sky. Thank you, and keep safe. Thank you, Rio. So that was um, Rio, a gentleman that we were talking to, and he, um, he says that he saw this fire, um, he saw it from his kitchen about two hours ago. He said that it started on one side of the building and then an hour later he had come out and had um, engulfed the entire building. And as you can see, these are the latest pictures that we've, we're getting. Um, and you can see an absolutely devastating fire. We've heard from the London Fire Brigade. They say there are 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters tackling this place. It's in West London. Um, they say that a, an evacuation process is underway. This is a block of flats you're looking at. So there would have been people in there. It happened at 1.16 in the morning. That's when police say that they were called to reports of a large fire at a block of flats. It's in Lancaster West Estate, which is W11. Officers, the London Fire, fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Service are currently on the scene. An evacuation process is underway. So far, we've only heard of two people being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. 
And as soon as we get any updates on that situation in West London, we will bring them to you. We want to update you on the situation in West London where there's a very serious fire going on. Um, and we've just had a, a tweet from the London Fire Brigade. If you want to follow them on Twitter, it's at London Fire. And they're saying crews continue to work hard at a tower block fire in North Kensington. Fire is from the second to top floor of the 27-storey building. So that's from the London Fire Brigade. They're saying it's a 27 story building that's what you're looking at now it's an apartment block it's in north kensington and the fire is from the second to top floor so just to bring you up to date with what's going on that's where it is latimer road um, it's in west london that's kensington palace you can see there so the west of london w11 if you know your postcodes police say they were called at 116 this morning about two hours ago just over two hours ago to reports of a large fire at a block of flats in the Lancaster West estate. Officers, the London Fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Service are all on the scene. An evacuation process is underway. Um, the update they've given us about people injuries um, is that they're aware of two people being treated at the scene for smoke inhalation and that they'll bring us an update on that um, if there are uh, as to whether there are any further injuries but this did happen at 1 16 in the morning and it is an apartment block a 27 story building according to the london fire brigade so as soon as we have any information on the people who are inside that um, apartment building we will bring it to you to give you um, a sense of geography this is in Ladbrook Grove. It's close to Notting Hill and Holland Park tube stations. It's near to Latimer Road and Ladbrook Grove tube stations. It's also near the, um, the big Westfield shopping centre, just over the highway from there, just over the roundabout. So at the moment, what we know is that a 27-storey apartment building is on fire in West London. An evacuation process is underway. 40 fire trucks, 200 firefighters are on the scene. And we will bring you the latest right after this break on Sky News. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, there is a very serious fire in West London. These are the latest pictures. It's in the Grenfell Apartment Building Tower. It's a 27-storey building. And according to the London Fire Brigade, the fire is from the second to top floor of that 27-storey building. The London Fire Brigade says there are 40 fire trucks and 200 firefighters on the scene and that the crew are continuing to work hard to stop the fire. It's in North Kensington. It's very close to Notting Hill and Holland Park. It's in Ladbrook Grove, if you know um, West London. It's in Ladbrook Gro Grove, W11. It's near the Latimer Road tube stations and the Ladbrook Grove tube stations and it's near to the Westfield Shopping Centre. At the moment, we have no word on casualties. We we're aware of two people. The police say that two people were being treated at the scene for smoke inhalation. But that is, that's the only word we have on injuries. As soon as we have an update on that, we will bring it to you. If you look at uh, what you're looking at now, that's a map of the area. So it's uh, Lancaster West Estate. It's in West London, W11, as I said, near Notting Hill and the Westfield Shopping Mall, just over the roundabout from there. So according to police, they say that they were called at 1.16 UK time. So that was just over two hours ago to reports of a large fire at a block of flats in the Lancaster West Estate. They've updated that London Fire Brigade and they say that that fire is from the second to top floor of that 27 storey building. We've spoken to one witness who says he saw it, he saw it from his kitchen window at around one o'clock. And he said that it started on one side. This is a witness who was about 300 metres from that building. He said that it started on one side of the building and then an hour later it had engulfed the building. And as you can see, it's a pretty serious situation they're dealing with at the moment. In terms of injuries, so far we've just heard that two people were treated for smoke inhalation on, on the scene. That's what the police are saying. Um, as soon as they update us on any injuries on any people from there, um, we'll let you know. At, let's listen to, I told you that a, a gentleman spoke to us earlier and he told us how he saw it from his kitchen window. Let's have a listen again to that. This uh, gentleman is called Rio and he was a witness. 
you know, I was in the kitchen at the time, um, and I heard like the smoke alarm um, going off right in the distance, and because the sound was annoying me, I looked out the window, and then um, that's when I noticed that the building was on fire. How fast did it spread, Rio? Um, it did take some time, um, and then they were spraying it, um, so that was helping maintain it, but at the moment it's just got out of control, and they can't get high enough. Well, well that's um, what I was... Stuff. That's what I was going to ask. How are they trying to get higher than uh, however far they can reach with their trucks? Um, they're not. Um, it's literally, they're just spraying as high as they can get at the moment. So that's why the whole chop is um, spread, because they haven't been able to stop it. And so when you came out, you said you came out when you went for a walk. Um, how many hours yeah. after, was, after um, it started was that? Um, that was at least, well, I only got back about 10, 15 minutes ago. So, um, so, Ria, when did you say that you saw people on the other side of the building? That was at least an hour ago. That was way before I went um, for a walk. Right, so the, um, so when it started to spread on the other side, I started to see lights going up. Like, people had actually left, and then all the lights on that side are off now. So when you first saw it, when you, when you were in your kitchen and you first saw it, was it on one side of the building or where was it in terms of... Yeah, where... it was on um, one side of the building and um, the part that has um, spread over to now, um, that part was fine and unaffected and there was loads of people still in their houses at the time. But um, yeah, the fire has completely um, taken over that part and it's still spreading down to the other flat. And was there a sense of panic when you came out onto the street and everyone was, um, a, had been taken out of that building? Um, I didn't see anyone who was in that building. Um, everyone who's out on the street, um, when I was out there, um, I think people who live on the roads or in the area. Well, Korea, can you give us a sense of the area? You said you live about 300 metres from that building. Um, what is that area like? We've been saying it's near Notting Hill, Holland Park, near Westfield, um, the Westfield Mall. Is it a residential area? What are the other buildings um, around it like? Yeah, around here is very residential. It's a really quiet, peaceful area. Before you go very quickly, Rio, what can you see right now? Um, the fire is getting a lot worse, and there's a lot of smoke. It's out of control. And in terms of around the building, what's happening around the building? Um, there's a lot of activity with um, people moving around, watching. I'm at the fire brigades and stuff, like all stationed on my road. Well, that was Rio there. You were just listening to a conversation I had with him earlier. He was a witness to what you're looking at on your screens. That's live footage from West London of an enormous fire at a 27-storey block of flats in West London. It's in Ladbroke Grove um, in, uh, near White City. It's Lancaster West Estate, Grenfell Tower, 27-storey block of flats. Police say they were called at 1.16 London time this morning, just over two hours ago, to reports of a large fire at a block of flats in the Lancaster West Estate. It's in West London, it's near Notting Hill, uh, near Holland Park, near the Westfield Mall, near White City, just to give you a sense of where it is. But that now is live footage of that building, and it looks like that building is completely gutted. It's a 27-storey block of flats. London Fire Brigade, they've been up to updating their Twitter feed, and they say that there are 40 fire trucks and 200 firefighters on the scene there. In terms of casualties, this did happen at 1.16 in the morning. One would assume that people would be at home, asleep in their beds. They're saying, the London Fire Brigade and the police are saying that at this stage, they are aware of two people who were treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. And that is the only word they have on injuries. As soon as we hear anything more, we will bring you that breaking news. London Fire Brigade says 40 fire engines are there, 200 firefighters, and that they are working hard at this tower block fire in North Kensington. They say the fire is from the second to top floor of the 27 apartment building. We will bring you all the latest right here on Sky. We're going to a break back in a, back in a short while. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, these are live pictures of an apartment building fire in West London. It's in North Kensington. 
Police were called at 1.16 this morning to reports of a large fire at a block of flats in the Lancaster West Estate. This is Grenfell Tower. According to the London Fire Brigade, it's 27 storeys tall. And they say that the fire is from the second to top floor of that 27-storey building. We've had no word on uh, injuries or people. They do say that an evacuation process is underway and that they are aware of two people who have been treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. As soon as we get an update on that, we will, of course, bring that to you. But two people so far have been treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. Uh, local authority has been informed, this is the police telling us this, and the cord cordons are in place. And uh, you've been advised, well, uh, the public is being advised to avoid that area, the estate, that's Lancaster West Estate, and the surrounding area. So avoid that area, just to give you an idea of where it is. This is Grenfell Tower. It's on Latimer Road in Ladbrook Grove. There you can see Latimer Road. So this is the west of London, W11. Um, it's near Notting Hill, Holland Park. That's Kensington Palace, as you can see, so just above um, Kensington Palace. It's very close to the Westfield Shopping Mall, if you know that uh, huge complex there. It's just over the, um, the motorway from there. It's also very close to Portobello Road. That's also very... Um, that's nearby. In terms of the situation on the ground there, the London Fire Brigade, on their Twitter feed, at London Fire... They're saying that 40 fire trucks are on the scene and 200 firefighters are there. And these are live pictures to the left of your screen that you can see. It's a 27-storey apartment building in West London. It's uh, Latimer Road in West London. 27 storeys, and according to the London Fire Brigade, the fire is from the second top story of that building. We spoke to a gentleman earlier who said that he saw it from his kitchen window two hours ago when it first started and according to him, his name was Rio, he spoke to us earlier, he said that it started on one side of the building and then when he went out an hour later it had engulfed the entire thing which is obviously the situation as you can see it now. It very much looks like it has uh, gutted the entire building. We have had uh, no more word from the London Fire Brigade but let me tell you what they've said this morning so far. Um, they initially said about an hour ago that they were currently attending a fire at a tower block on the Lancaster West Estate. It's just below Kensington Oldridge Academy, if you know the area, just over Lancaster Green from that. Um, it's in North Kensington. They then went on to say, um, for, this was 47 minutes ago, that 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters were called to that tower block fire in North Kensington. And then they updated it just 18 minutes ago, London Fire Brigade, saying that crews are continuing to work hard at a tower block fire in North Kensington. The fire is from the second top floor of the 27-storey building. Let's talk now to Saffron Dior, who was a witness. Saffron, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Can you tell us where you are now and what's happening? Oh, me, I'm in North London now, but um, I was driving past at the time when I noticed it was happening and I saw one side of the block of flat completely engulfed in flame. And then um, I saw emergency services making their way and firefighters were trying to fight it. But I wasn't close, really, but it's such a big fire, you can see it from quite a distance. So were you on the street, Saffron, or where were you when you saw it happen? And what made you, what drew, drew your attention to it? Was it, you saw it on one side of the building, you said? Yeah, I was driving, so oh, okay. um, I wasn't near it. Um, and what caught my attention is that you could see smoke from the sky. And then as it got closer, you could just see the complete flame. So the whole left side was in flame. We had debris falling off the building. How far away were you from the fire, Saffron? Did you, did you drive past it? Yeah, driving past, but I wasn't close. Probably, yeah, I was on a motorway, so it wasn't close, close, but you could see it. You could see it, okay. And did you, you saw the emergency services, you said? Yeah, there was quite a lot on the way. Um, we came both ways, and we saw them on the way each time. Probably about four or five police cars, two, three, firefighters, cars, just a lot of emergency services. Okay, and how fast did you, did you think it was spreading? 
Uh, very quickly, but because I didn't see it start, I'm not really sure. But for the whole left side to be in flames, I could see that it was a really serious fire and it was spreading to the other side. And I've heard that it's also spread to another building nearby. So, so yeah. sorry, Saffron, what did you say about the building nearby? Um, I saw on Twitter that apparently it spread to a... a ah, OK. No, it, OK. Thank you. Well, there's no confirmation of that um, at the moment. Just to bring you up to date, this is a fire in the Grenfell Tower, 27-storey apart apartment block. And Saffron Dio is on the phone talking to us. Um, Saffron, you witnessed the event. What actually happened when you first saw it? And how far away... You say you weren't very close to it, but give us a sense of how far away you were from it and that you could still see it. It gives you an idea, perhaps, of how big it is. OK, how far away? Ooh, I'm not sure. Maybe... I don't know. Probably, like, 500 metres. It was far away. It was far away because I was on the motorway. But because it's such a big building, you can see it from far away. You can see the smoke in the sky. You can see the flame. You have the debris going on the motorway. You have people stopping everywhere. It's caused a big scene. So give us a... So you did actually go to the area around it, did you? How close did you drive... When you drove past, how close were you? Can you give us a sense of what was happening around it when it was, um, when it was on fire? No, I didn't go fully close to it because I was on my way somewhere else, but I just saw that there was a lot of people around, that I wasn't nearby enough to see any drama that was by the building. OK, thank you. And, Saffron, do you know that area at all? No, I don't. I was just passing through and it caught my attention. OK, Saffron. Well, thank you so much for joining us and thank you um, for sharing that with us tonight. OK, well, let's, let's listen now to um, Rio. And he's a, a witness I spoke to earlier. He's in an apartment block about 300 metres from this, and he saw it from his kitchen when it started about um, an hour ago. Let's have a listen to what Rio told me. Um, um, I heard, like, the smoke alarm um, going off right in the distance. And because the sound was annoying me, I looked out the window. And then um, that's when I noticed that the building was on fire. How fast did it spread, Rio? Um, it did take some time, um, and then they were spraying it, um, so that was helping maintain it. But at the moment, it's just got out of control, and they can't get high enough. Well, well that's um, what I was. Stuff. That's what I was going to ask. How are they trying to get higher than uh, however far they can reach with their trucks? Um, they're not. Um, it's literally they're just spraying as high as they can get at the moment. So that's why the whole chop is um, spread because they haven't been able to stop it. And so when you came out, you said you came out when you went for a walk. Um, how many hours yeah. after, was, after um, it started was that? Um, that was at least, well, I only got back about 10, 15 minutes ago. So, um... so, Rhea, when did you say that you saw people on the other side of the building? That was at least an hour ago. That was way before I went, um, went for a walk. Um, when it started to spread on the other side, I started to see lights going up. Like, people had actually left, and then all the lights on that side are off now. So when you first saw it, when you, when you were in your kitchen and you first saw it, was it on one side of the building, or where was it in terms of...? Yeah, where... it was on um, one side of the building, and um, the part that has um, spread over to now, um, that part was fine and unaffected, and there was loads of people still in their houses at the time. But, um, yeah, the fire has completely um, taken over of that part and it's still spreading down to the other flat. And was there a sense of panic when you came out onto the street and everyone was, um, uh, had been taken out of that building? Um, I didn't see anyone who was in that building. Um, everyone who's out on the street, um, when I was out there, um, I think people who live on the roads or in the area... Okay, Ria, can you give us a sense of the area? You said you live about 300 metres from that building. Um, what is that area like? We've been saying it's near Notting Hill, Holland Park, near Westfield, um, the Westfield Mall. Is it a residential area? What are the other buildings um, around it like? Yeah, Rampe is very residential. It's a really quiet, peaceful area. Before you go very quickly, Ria, what can you see right now? Um, the fire is getting a lot worse and there's a lot of smoke out of control. And in terms of around the building, what's happening around the building? Um, there's a lot of activity with um, people moving around, watching um, at the fire brigades and stuff, so, like, all stationed on my road. 
So that was Rhea there, um, a witness to what you're looking at now. That's um, a fire in Grenfell Tower in West London. It started just over two hours ago. Um, according to Rhea, that it started on one side of the building. Two witnesses, actually, that we've spoken to now. It started on one side of the building, but as you can see, it has now engulfed the building. It's a 27-storey building, according to London Fire Brigade. And they're saying that the fire came from the second, the second from the top, um, second to the top floor. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's from the second to the top floor. Um, now, we have uh, been using footage from uh, a lady called Celeste Thomas. Let's get that footage up for you. It's, um, okay, well, we'll stay on this picture. This is the live feed. And Celeste Thomas has been speaking. She said that police, moving, police were moving everyone back. And she literally lives across the road. Hundreds of people are outside, um, residents and families trying to find each other. Police have moved everyone back out of direct sight but can hear crackling and debris falling. So that's from Celeste Thomas, and she says that she literally lives across the road. This is a 27-storey um, 27 tower in West London. Police say they were called to an incident, uh, reports of a large, flyer, a large fire at a block of flats. It's in the Lancaster West Estate, and uh, police say they first got reports of this fire at 1.16 this morning, so nearly, nearly three hours ago now. Um, officers, the London Fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Services are on the scene. And, uh, okay, and London Ambulance Services, they're saying that they've sent a number of um, resources to that scene, including their high-risk team. We have had only um, one, two people are being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. That's the, uh, the only word we've had on possible injuries. So two people, according to the police, being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. Um, they say they are awaiting an update, and as soon as we have that, we will bring it to you. But these are live pictures you're looking at um, of a fire that has now been burning for nearly three hours in West London. It's the Glenfell Tower a 27-storey apartment building. Police say they were first called to scenes of a fire at 1.16 London time this morning, 1.16 UK time this morning. Um, let me give you a sense of where it is. It's in West London, so um, W11. It's in North Kensington. That's what the London Fire Brigade is saying. Um, Grenfell Tower, it's part of the Lancaster West Estate. And if you know the area, it's just opposite, um, let me get it up now, it's opposite, uh, just hang on one second, the Kensington Aldridge Academy. So there's a Kensington Aldridge Academy, Lancaster Green, and it's just opposite that, if you know the area. If you don't, it's close to Notting Hill, close to Holland Park. Uh, in terms of tube stations, it's close to Labrook Grove and Latimer Road tube stations, and it's very close to the um, Westfield shopping mall. So these are just, these are live pictures now. You can see the emergency services are there. According to the London Fire Brigade, they've got 40 fire trucks and 200 firefighters on the scene. Um, London Ambulance Service have also said that they have, um, they've sent uh, a lot of their resources there, including their high-risk team. In terms of people, this is an apartment building, and it happened at 1.16 in the morning. The word um, on the people who are in that building from the police is that two people on the scene have been, have been treated for smoke inhalation. And as soon as we get an update on that, we'll bring it to you. But right now, let's talk to Victoria Goldsmith. She's on the line right now, and she just lives a few roads away from Grenfell Tower. Victoria, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. What is, what is happening right now where you are? Um, the whole building seems to be engulfed now. Um, it's, it's spread all the way to the top. Um, so I heard it about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I, I ran out to see if I could help, but there was already people there. Um, there was literally two people trapped at the top and they had mobile phones and they had the lights on trying to flash to signal people and they, they couldn't get to them. They were just just caught fire, just kept going and the light just went out. Okay, Victoria, it sounds very distressing. I just want to update everyone that the police have told us we, um, in terms of injuries, in terms of people in that building, 
There's reports of two people being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. Um, just to reiterate that that's what we're hearing in terms of injuries from the police right now. So, Victoria, can you tell us a bit more about this area? What is happening now? Where are the people who've been evacuated from that building? What's going on around it right now? Um, the people just stood outside the, the leisure centre and police were trying to get people further back because the road's quite narrow. So we're trying to get the services in and out really quick. Um, I sort of like tried to talk to a few people and, you know, come away from it because I don't want to be in the way of other people. Um, but it seems to have quieted down a lot now. You know, it's uh, they're trying to get it under control, but it's uh, it's pretty horrendous. Indeed, Victoria. So the people that you spoke to on the ground were they from? They had been evacuated from that tower. Yeah, um, one lady. She was sort of really distressed, sort of having a panic attack. So I went to see if I could, you know, talk to her and, you know, see what happened. And she was just saying, you know, that's my home, that's my whole life. And she said, like, my family's here. And I was just like, well, at least your family's safe. And I just kind of, like, gave her a hug and she just started crying. And I was just, you know, trying to do everything I could. OK, Victoria, an understandably very distressing situation. Thank you very much for joining us, and please keep safe. That's Victoria Goldsmith. She lives just a few roads away from Grenfell Tower. These are live, the latest pictures excuse me, from West London, where that 27-storey tower is on fire. We'll have all the latest from West London when we come back after this break. It started on the, on the fourth floor and has just spread all the way up and around and over the whole, the whole thing. So, uh, have you spoken to people who are in that building? Um, I've spoken to uh, uh, some families of other of families of families that were in that building. As uh, so we've been told to bring water, there was a little shop just at the corner of the street that's just opened up. We've been taking uh, crates and cartons of, uh, of water and clothes as well. These people have just come out in, in their in their uh, you know their pajamas with nothing on their feet. So we've just been bringing coats and shoes and things like that down to the cordon where the police have taken them. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I've seen people just with outside with their kids, just holding uh, dogs and cats, mm. just bemused, just so shaken. I mean, that's your entire life. You're just sitting there watching your entire life go up and say. It happened nearly three hours ago. That's when the police said they had the first, the initial report when they were called to that scene. Um, mm. wh what is the scene now? Are, they, are the people still at the bottom of that building? Is there a cordon around it? What's, what's happening now? Yeah, there's a cordon all the way, all the way around. Um, there seems to have, I mean, I, I hope they've got everybody out. I mean, they've, they've taken everybody out. I think they've probably taken them to the, the leisure centre, which is the closest um, to it. Um, but the building is pretty much burnt out. There's a tiny bit left that's not on fire. Um, but every single window is gutted. It, I mean, it must be a matter yeah. of time before the thing falls down. There's just nothing, there's nothing left of it. There's debris falling off it. Um, and it, yeah, the acrid smell is horrendous. And yeah, can you can you just explain to us what that that area is like for people not uh, who haven't really been around there? What is that area like, Lancaster West Estate? Um, it's, it's 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 got a very high density population. I think there was about two hundred families or something that lived in that that lived in that block. The streets around are very very narrow. They're all quite all, they're quite a Victorian layout. Um, I mean, the problem is that we've had a lot of roadworks recently. On the main road, there's been a um, gas works going on, and it's diverted all the main traffic off that main road through these little side roads. So even just on a normal day, these roads are totally blocked, let alone trying to bring six or seven fire engines and ambulances and police cars down it. it I think that must have hampered it in, in, in some way, just in terms of the speed of getting close, because you, you physically, some of these roads, you physically couldn't get a fire engine down. Um, but with cars parked on, on both sides. OK, Tim Downey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. That was Tim Downey. He lives 600 metres away from this. This is the Grenfell Tower. This is live footage from West London. This building is on fire. Police say they were called to, at 1.16 UK time to reports of a large fire block. We will have all the latest here on Sky News. The latest is that two people are being treated at the scene for smoke inhalation. This is a fire in North Kensington. It's an ongoing situation. Stay with us here on Sky News. 
Good morning to you. It's four o'clock here in London. Uh, these are live pictures out of West London, where a 27-storey apartment building has caught fire. The latest news we have from the police, uh, that they were called to reports of a large fire at a block of flats in Lancaster West Estate at 1.16 London time. It's now four o'clock in the morning. We have a tweet from the Metropolitan Police and they are saying that residents continue to be evacuated from the Tower Block fire in North Kensington. A number of people are being treated for a range of injuries. So that's the Metropolitan Police, the London Police, saying that residents are still being evacuated from this Tower Block. It's in North Kensington and they are saying that a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries. Earlier they said that two people were being um, treated for smoke inhalation and they were being treated on the scene, they've got officers from the London Fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Service on the scene. And um, as the Met Police said there, an evacuation process is underway. This is a 27-storey fire, in the London 27-storey uh, building, excuse me, and the London Fire Brigade are saying it, that it's sped from the second floor of the building right to the top of the building. Um, there are cordons in place. It's advised that if you're near there, um, just don't go anywhere near that area. Um, the estate is called Lancaster West Estate. It's in W11. It's very near Notting Hill um, and Holland Park and also the Westfield Shopping Mall in White City. Um, so that's where it is. Um, we've spoken to a number of uh, witnesses and we do have a camera on the scene. So let's hear now from two people who live close to the fire. They spoke to Sky News earlier and said they could hear people screaming from the burning building. My son woke me up at um, about quarter to two this morning to say that the tower block was on fire. And then when I, when I, when I, I could see it from my garden, it was just the, the left-hand side piece there, just a couple of floors. And over the hours, it's just it's spread. Just spread, spread like. And it's gone round the, um, the left of the building as well. Yeah. And well, I just can't believe the way it's gone it's, up so it's quick. Spread so, it's spread so but you could hear you can hear people. There's been we've been I mean I live down in it's down there sorry, about a five minute walk away and we could hear people screaming, help me, help me and flashing their phone lights to let people know that they were there. Yeah, but there's it's nothing just, there's, you're just helpless so we've just come we've out just, just been asked to bring up water to the, the people that have come out to the sports the centre. Solution. There's a sports centre around there and we just they let us through the cordons to bring up loads of bottles of water. So that was two ladies who live across from that building. That's the Grenfell Tower. These are live pictures from West London. The Metropolitan Police say that people are being evacuated and they have uh, uh, reports of a number of injuries. Um, I want to bring you now, the London Fire Brigade have just posted um, an update to their Facebook um, page. Let me read that to you. Um, 40 fire engines and over 200 firefighters and officers have been called to a tower block fire on the Lancaster West Estate in North Kensington this morning. The brigade has received multiple calls. The fire is from the second floor to the top floor of the 27th floor building. The, they've uh, quoted the Assistant Commissioner Dan Daly and he has said, firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are working extremely hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. This is a large and very serious incident and we have deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances. The brigade was called at 12.54, so that's 54 minutes past midnight, so about 10 to 1 in the morning, and they are still on the scene. Fire, fire crews from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington and from surrounding fire stations are in attendance. The cause of the fire is not known at this stage. So that's from the London Fire Brigade. Um, they've just posted that on their Facebook page. They're also updating people on at London Fire on Twitter. Let's listen now to um, Tim Downey. He, he lives near the area, about 600 metres from Grenfell Tower. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. I mean, we've been watching this now for, for a, a long time, and the fire has spread all over the building now. Like the whole building is, has been totally engulfed. It's, it's, it's gone. There's like a tiny little bit left that hasn't been on, that's not on fire. Um, but it's, it's just swept through the whole, the whole thing. Um, and there's, there's hardly anything left of the building now. Tim, explain to us when you first saw it. What, uh, when were you first made aware of what was going on? Uh, it was probably about 2 o'clock, um, and then woken up by just the incredible noise of sirens and helicopters. 
and shouting. Um, so we just looked out of our window and suddenly to see, to see it just on fire, a whole sign, all, all 27 stories of it just up in flames. Um, and just the smell, the burning that you could smell when the wind changed and the heat, even from where, when, where, where we are, the heat was extraordinary. Um, but yeah, and that's how, we, that's how we first kind of saw it. And I mean, I've never seen a building this size on fire ever. I've never seen a fire like it in all the time I've lived in London. You say it's at the end of your road. How far away from you is it? Um, it's probably 600 metres, 700 metres away. And in terms of the geography and in terms of the side of the building that was initially on fire, because you're the third person now who's told us that it, was, it started on one side and then spread to the rest, where, what side was that? Um, it's the side that was the closest to the Kensington Leisure Centre from, where, from what I saw. So where I see it, that side of the building wasn't on fire, it was the other side. Um, but now I've just watched it as, it as the fire has just wrapped itself around and just engulfed the whole the whole thing. I mean, from what I have heard just from people on the street, is it started on the, on the fourth floor and it's just spread all the way up and around and over the whole, the whole thing. So uh, have you spoken to people who are in that building? Um, I've spoken to uh, uh, some families of other, of families of families that were in that building as we've been told to bring water. There was a little shop just at the corner of the street that's just opened up and we've been taking uh, crates and cartons of, uh, of water and clothes as well. These people have just come out in, in their, in their, uh, you know, their pajamas. There's nothing on their feet. So we've just been bringing coats and shoes and things like that down to the cordon where the police have taken them. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I've seen people just with outside with their kids just holding uh, dogs and cats, mm. just bemused, just so shaken. I mean, that's your entire life. You're just sitting there watching your entire life go up in flames. It happened nearly three hours ago. That's when the police said they had the first, the initial report when they were called to that scene. Um, mm. wh what is the scene now? Are, they, are the people still at the bottom of that building? Is there a cordon around it? What's, what's happening now? Yeah, there's a cordon all the way, all the way around. Um, they seem to have, I mean, I, I hope they've got everybody out. I mean, they've, mm. they've taken everybody out. I think they're probably taken them to the, the leisure centre, which is the closest um, to it. Um, but the building is pretty much burnt out. There's a tiny bit left that's not on fire, um, but every single window is gutted. It, I mean, it must be a matter yeah. of time before the thing falls down. There's just nothing, there's nothing left of it. There's debris falling off it. Um, and it, yeah, the acrid smell is horrendous and yeah. Can you, can you just explain to us what that, that area is like for people not, uh, who haven't really been around there? What is that area like, Lancaster West Estate? Um, it's, it's, it's got a very high density population. I think there was about 200 families or something that lived in that, that lived in that block. The streets around are very, very narrow. They're all quite, all, still quite a Victorian layout. Um, I mean, the problem is that we've had a lot of roadworks recently on the main road. There's been a um, gas works going on and it's diverted all the main traffic off that main road through these little side roads. So even just on a normal day, these roads are totally blocked, let alone trying to bring six or seven fire engines and ambulances and police cars down it. it I think that must have hampered it in, in, in some way, just in you know, the, the speed of getting close, because you, you physically, some of these roads, you physically couldn't get a fire engine down, um, but with cars parked on, on both sides. Well, that was Tim Downey, who I spoke to earlier, and he, he lives about 600 metres from this flat, from this, uh, this apartment block building. If you're just waking up, good morning to you. These are live pictures from West London. The sun is just coming up here in the UK. It is 4.09 in the morning, and this is in West London. A 27-storey apartment block is on fire. This is the latest from the London Fire Brigade. They posted this to their Facebook They've said that 40 fire engines and over 200 firefighters and officers have been called to a tower block fire on Lancaster West um, Estate in North Kensington this morning.
The brigade has received multiple calls. The fire is from the second floor to the top floor of that 27 floor building. So you can see there just the level of destruction that's visible. These are live pictures from West London. It's in North Kensington. According to the Assistant Commissioner Dan Daly of the London Fire Brigade, he said that firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are working extremely hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. This is a large and very serious incident and we've deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances. The brigade was called at 0054, so about 10 to 1 in the morning, and is still at the scene. It's now 10 past 4 in the morning here in the UK. And fire crews from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington and from surrounding fire stations are in attendance. The cause of the fire is not known at this stage. The Metropolitan Police, they've also tweeted and they've said that residents continue to be evacuated from the tower um, tower block fire in North Kensington a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries so that's the only word we have on the people who are in that tower is that, that they're still getting evacuated and that a number of people have been treated for a range of injuries let's um, listen now to Victoria Goldsmith she spoke to me earlier and she lives just a few roads away from Grenfell Tower the whole building seems to be engulfed now and um, it's it spread all the way to the top because um, I heard it about one o'clock in the morning and I, I ran out to see if I could help, but there was already people there. Um, there was literally two people trapped at the top and they had mobile phones and they had the lights on trying to flash to signal people and they, they couldn't get to them. They were just, just caught fire, just kept going and the light just went out. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about this area? What is happening now? Where are the people who've been evacuated from that building? What's going on around it right now? Um, the people just stood outside the, the leisure centre and police were trying to get people further back because the road's quite narrow. So they were trying to get the services in and out really quick. Um, I sort of like tried to talk to a few people and you know come away from it because I don't want to be in the way of other people. Um, but it seems to have quieted down a lot now. You know, it's, uh, they're trying to get it under control, but it's, uh, it's pretty horrendous. Indeed, Victoria. So the people that you spoke to on the ground, were they from, they had been evacuated from that tower? Yeah, um, one lady, she was sort of really distressed, sort of having a panic attack. So I went to see if I could, you know, talk to her and you know, see what's happened. And she was just saying, you know, that's my home, that's, my whole life and she said like my family's here and I was just like well at least your family's safe and I just kind of like gave her a hug and she just started crying and I was just you know trying to do everything I could. So that was Victoria Goldsmith. She was talking to me um, a few minutes ago. She is a resident of that area and she was just explaining to me what was going on now and um, what happened when she first noticed this fire happening. Let me bring you some more um, updates in terms of eyewitness accounts. Um, We've had some people say that the cordon, so the police set up a cordon, they said people need to um, avoid this area, the, the estate, it's Lancaster West Estate, avoid Lancaster West Estate and the area around it. Um, and we've had people on the scene saying that the, that cordon has been moved further and further back since the fire started, and that's police officers telling witnesses on the ground. Um, one other witness has said that he's spoken, well, he's seen one lady sitting on the curb in tears next to him and that she has told him her five-year-old son is missing. So that's a witness on the ground um, telling us that uh, one lady that he saw in tears on the ground has told him that her five-year-old son is missing. Let me just bring you up to date with what, um, what we're dealing with here. The police say that they were called at about 10 to 1 to reports of a large fire in Glenfell Tower in North Kensington. This is... Glenfell Tower. It's a 27-storey apartment block. This is about three hours on from when it started and um, police say that there are specialist teams there. The uh, London Fire Brigade says that there are specialist teams on the scene. They're evacuating the tower. They're still evacuating that tower, getting people out of there and that there are a number of people who have been injured. Um, the London Fire Brigade, they've also posted something on their Facebook page. They say that 45 engines and over 200 firefighters and officers were called to that tower block fire. It's in 
Lancaster West Estate, give you a sense of where it is. It's in West London, W11, so North Kensington. It's on Latimer Road. If we can bring up the map just on half of that screen. Okay, we'll work. Okay, well, we'll actually bring you that map, but um, I'll just explain to you where it is. If you know the Westfield, um, Westfield Shopping Centre, it's very close to there. It's in Ladbrook Grove, near White City, near Notting Hill, near Holland Park, just to give you a sense of where it is. It's a 27-storey building. We've spoken to three witnesses who say when they first saw the fire, at, from about one o'clock, witnesses say that it, it started on one side of the building and then it took about an hour for it to engulf the entire building. The London Fire Brigade say that it is now from the second storey up to the top story of that building. And that is a 27 story building. It's an apartment block. We have no words, word on the people inside. Initially, the uh, London Fire Brigade was saying that they were, they were aware of two people who were treated on the scene um, for smoke inhalation. We have had an update. We have had an update um, from there and that's the Met Police. So initially London Fire Brigade saying that they had treated two people um, on the scene for smoke inhalation. Met police now say that residents are still being evacuated from that block and that a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries. But that's the only word we have on the people who are in that building. As soon as we have an update, we'll bring that to you. Um, let me just bring you an update from some of the witnesses that we've been hearing from. On Twitter, Celeste Thomas, she lives at the scene and she has said... Police moving everyone back. I literally live across the road. Hundreds of people outside, residents and families trying to find each other. Police have moved everyone back out of direct sight, but can hear cracking and debris falling. So that is live footage of the Grenfell Tower in West London. You can see that the sun is just coming up. It's getting lighter and lighter. Let's hear now from Saffron Dio. She was just driving past the scene as that fire broke out past at the time when I noticed it was happening and I saw one side of the book of flat completely engulfed in flames and then um, I saw emergency services making their way and firefighters were trying to fight it but I wasn't close really but it's such a big fire you can see it from quite a distance. So were you on the street Saffron or where were you when you saw it happen and what made you what drew, drew your attention to it was it you saw on one side of the building you said? Yeah, I was driving, so oh, okay. um, I wasn't near it. Um, and what caught my attention is that you could see smoke from the sky. And then as I got closer, you could just see the complete flame. So the whole left side was in flame. We had debris falling off the building. How far away were you from the fire, Saffron? Did you, did you drive past it? Yeah, driving past, but I wasn't close, probably... Yeah, I was on a motorway, so it wasn't close, close, but you could see it. You could see it, okay. And did you, you saw the emergency services, you said? Yeah, there was quite a lot on the way. Um, we came both ways, and we saw them on the way each time. Probably about four or five police cars, two, three firefighters cars, just a lot of emergency services. Okay, and how fast did you, did you think it was spreading? Uh, very quickly, but because I didn't see it start, I'm not really sure, but for the whole left side to be in flames, I could see that it was a really serious fire and it was spreading. Well, that was Saffron Dior. She was driving past the scene when this fire broke out and she was just explaining what she saw there. She drove past it. We do have a camera there. This is live footage from West London where the sun is coming up and you can see the extent of the damage to this building. This is Grenfell Tower, a 27-storey apartment, 27 apartment block in West London, where a fire broke out. Police, the Met Police and London Fire Brigade said that they were first called to reports at about 10 to 1 this morning. They were called to reports of a very serious fire, that's what they're calling it, a very serious fire, and the London Fire Brigade say that 45 engines and 200 firefighters are there. They're continuing to evacuate people. They've had to go in with specialist equipment. 
to go in and help get those people out. Um, initially, they were said that they were called um, from between, uh, the first reports came in at 10 to 1 and then 116 again, and they were called to this block of flats. It's in Lancaster West Estate, which is in uh, West London. It's very close to Notting Hill, Holland Park, White City, very close to the Westfield Shopping Mall, if you know that, that's where it is, um, sort of over the, the roundabout there. Um, huge plumes of smoke as Londoners wake up they will see that for miles around but as the sun comes up we can see the level of destruction and we have um, we do have our senior correspondent Ashish Joshi he is on the scene let's go directly to Ashish Ashish what can you tell us he's on the phone Ashish can you hear us what's happening it's uh, the tower block the 24 story tower block is is still alight. There are thick plumes of smoke, as you can see from your pictures. I've just been speaking to some residents on the ground, people who have been evacuated. There are hundreds of people on the streets, densely packed neighborhood, lots of council uh, flats, uh, homes. They've all been asked to leave their homes because there is, I suppose, a fear or a danger that parts of this building could start coming down now. The, the fire has gone all the way right to the very top. Speaking to residents who were evacuated, there are still, according to the people I spoke to, and I ought to stress that this hasn't been confirmed by the emergency services who are on the ground, but we have seen people who are still being evac evacuated, people being taken away in, in chairs, um, away from the site to ambulances, which are on the end of the cordon. But certainly one person I spoke to, uh, an interview I did with him about 30 minutes ago, he seemed to suggest that the fire started at about a quarter to one, and he lives on the fourth floor of Grenfell Tower. He thinks that the fire started in his neighbor's flat because of a fire or a, an explosion with some sort of a domestic appliance. He said it was a fridge. His neighbor woke him up and said there's been a fire. And then very quickly, uh, they were evacuated. Well, they evacuated themselves, and the emergency services turned up some... 30 or 40 minutes later. So some residents had been alerted. They'd, they'd left the building. But certainly, he said there were about 206 or 216 homes or properties inside the tower block. So that will give you an indication of just how many people would have been inside when the fire started. One thing he did say, he said a lot of people were up because of uh, Ramadan. They had broken their fast. Some people had come back to sleep and were waking up again to eat before their fast started the next day. So that in itself uh, could have helped. If there were people who were awake, if their families were awake uh, because of Ramadan, that would have been um, probably a, a lifesaver for many of the families who are inside. But certainly he seems to suggest that there were people inside who were trying to call uh, friends who had been evacuated. So, um, but, but the situation here is extremely grim. Look, just looking at the uh, the fire it, it seems to have been diminished on, on many of the floors but it is still raging up towards the top floor as you can probably see in your picture now we can indeed Ashish I just want to update everyone that uh, Sadiq Khan mayor of London has tweeted and he has said that a major incident has been declared at Grenfell Tower in Kensington 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters at the scene follow at London Fire, which is the London Fire, um, uh, Fire Brigade, for updates. So that's Sadiq Khan saying that a major incident has been declared at Grenfell Tower in Kensington. 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters are at the scene. And Ashish, have you seen um, these emergency services? I mean, we've heard of a cordon that was put up around this building, and then witnesses say that that cordon has moved further and further away from that building. Can you see the amount of emergency um, crews there? What are they doing? Yeah, there, there, are, there are fire engines uh, on every street. Uh, there are fire engines, there are police officers, there are emergency personnel from the utility services, there are people here from the electricity board, the gas board. So this is a coordinated response from uh, all of the emergency services, but certainly drawing on the expertise of uh, the utility companies as well. You speak about the cordon. I mean, the, the cordon extends so far back now. I mean, it goes uh, for several blocks now. And, and you can hear, I, I can actually hear um, large, what, what sound like um, 
at least parts of the building inside, which might be coming away or beginning to collapse inside. And I think that's what the fear is here from the police. There are, there are hundreds of police officers here uh, manning the cordons, um, just urging residents uh, to try and stay as far back as possible. But obviously, a lot of the people who have been evacuated are, are standing and watching everything they own go up in flames. There, there's nothing they can do. There's a sense of helplessness. And, and all, of all the people here, there, there isn't any panic. People are just looking at what is uh, happening uh, with, with a degree of disbelief because the tower block is aflame, the, smokes are rise, the smoke is rising, and there are people who have escaped with their lives and are looking back on the tower uh, knowing that everything they own has been destroyed. It, it's, an, um, it's, it's a terrible, terrible situation here. Indeed, Ashish. Ashish, just stay with us for a moment. We're going to hear now from a witness, Mahadigal, who uh, spoke to our cameraman earlier. It's just a lot of smoke. It's just dark. Um, I slammed the door shut. Didn't even lock it or anything. I just slammed it shut. So there's no more smoke coming in because I knew I don't want the kids to suffocate and stuff. It's just too much. So this is the second incident that I personally have been in where there was fire. So I thought, well, this is just something I, I knew how to handle. So I just got towels. I waited out before I walked walk the kids up. With wet towels. In my hand, screaming down the whole hallway to the wife, she's in the living room. So I screamed out, I said, hey, there's fire, like, literally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding, there's fire, like, get out. What time were um, you, what time were you awake, awoken? We weren't awoken, we were awake, we were, you know, eating, drinking, you know, it's Ramadan, so it's just before, you know, it's almost time to stop eating, you know, I mean, about a couple hours, hour or so. We were going, preparing to go to sleep, so it's by chance that we had a knock and the guy who knocked, so happens to be the guy whose house was the cause of the whole thing, is his fridge. He explained to us as he came down afterwards and was outside the building, he explained to us that it was due to his fridge which exploded. That's what he kept saying. Floor. On the fourth floor in house number 16. And well, do you think everyone inside the block I has been evacuated? No. No. How do you know? How do we know? Because the fire spread extremely quick. And people on the left-hand side of the building were screaming out, help us, sticking their heads out of the window. People were waving phones for, you know, for invisibility because there's so much smoke coming around right now. The left-hand side caught smoke really fast. I think it's due to the... It's, it's hard to speculate now, but I would say it's the, the cladding and all this fixes is what caused the fire to just erupt in under an hour. there are people still inside? We do know, we do know there's do people. Know? We've received phone calls, we've received phone calls. We've got family and friends still in there. There is someone trapped in the 81, five-year-old girl. We wish her all the best, man, honestly, man. We wish her all the best. There's still some families coming out. There is more fire brigade and more firefighters going in there with the oxygen tanks and uh, first aid kits and all sorts of stuff. So. There's all sorts of different fiber grid units and departments that are turning up now. Amount of ambulances, every road around us, the buildings around us are all being evacuated. Okay, that was Mahedegal. He was talking to Ashish Joshi, who's our senior correspondent. He's on the phone with me at the moment. I'll talk to you in a moment, Ashish, but I just want to update you. We've been hearing from witnesses, and in the last two minutes, um, one witness has been saying that police are telling the gathered crowd tell your loved ones to get wet, a wet cloth over their face and get out, do not wait. And they've also been telling the crowd, if you get a call from a relative inside, tell them to self-evacuate, do not wait for the brigade. What you're looking at now is live pictures from West London. Our senior correspondent Ashish Joshi is there. And Ashish, you've been speaking to people who were in that building when the fire started. Yeah, you just heard from uh, a resident, Mahad Igal, who was... Uh, right next to the fire, he thinks, uh, when it began at about quarter to one this morning. I, I met Mahad just on the periphery of the cordon, looking back on the tower, and he was telling me about the evacuation. He said he'd, he'd been involved in a fire in, in the block before, so he knew exactly what was happening. Obviously, he didn't know about the severity or what was later to become such a, a serious fire, but he said he told his wife and children uh, to get out as quickly as they could. And so he's standing there now on the edge of the cordon in, in the T-shirt and 
the um, the tracksuit he was wearing, everything he owns is inside his apartment, which is now completely gutted. But it's a warning from the emergency services. There are more crews turning up. There are more firefighters on the ground who are attending and more police officers, of course, uh, trying to keep the, the, uh, the, the residents who live around the tower block to try and keep them away for their own safety. But it's it's very difficult. You walk outside and you can see this tower block for miles around. When I took a, a taxi into West London this morning, you, you could smell the pungent smoke um, several blocks away. And you could see the fire, which was alight in the, in the middle of the night. And, um, and the distress and look on all the people who were just standing and watching what is unfolding before their very eyes. But as you can see from your pictures, there are parts of the building which are now uh, coming away. This is... Uh, an old tower block, um, I guess, um, 60s or 70s, there are people talking about refurbishment programs. There are, there are residents who have been telling me it's because of the, the, the gas works or because of the cladding that the council undertook um, a, a renovation program where they put some cladding. And um, there, there's also lots of talk about fire alarms um, not going off and, and not uh, alerting or waking residents. So, but this will come at, at a much later stage when uh, the fire has been brought under control and the people who are inside have been brought to safety and, and certainly the, uh, the people who have been evacuated earlier are treated. I did see uh, people being wheeled away by uh, paramedics and ambulance crews. And when I spoke to a police officer on the edge of the cordon, uh, she told me that the cordons had been put up so people could be treated inside those cordons then, and that's why the cordons were being thrown back because more people are being brought out and being treated. Now, Ashish, you've had decades of reporting experience. I wouldn't want to put you on the spot here, but in this type of situation, would the fire brigades be tackling the fire from the outside or from the inside? Oh, from the outside. I mean, lo looking at this now, uh, there, there, was a, um, there was a ladder up earlier, and, but you, the intensity of the heat of when, when you consider this is a tower block, which is 24 stories high, I mean, to try and to get anywhere near that building, uh, it just wouldn't be possible just because of the heat uh, that has been generated because of the fire. So it, it's, it must be one of the most difficult fires for any uh, firefighter to have to tackle. But certainly it's, the, the, the access is there, but it would be almost impossible to try and get anywhere inside the building because of the intensity of the blaze right now. They've got to hope that people have managed to evacuate uh, themselves and they will be met by emergency services somewhere if there are firefighters inside. I can't tell you from where I'm standing. I can see certainly uh, the top um, two-thirds of the building, but the base, the, uh, the ground, I can't tell you what's going on there. So there will be uh, emergency services in attendance as close as they can possibly get, uh, tr trying to make sure that everyone who's inside the building has been evacuated. That's their prior concern now. Indeed. Um, Ashish, just stay with me a moment. I just want to update people who are just joining us. Um, and just to follow on from that point, we've had witnesses who just five minutes ago have been tweeting and saying that police on the scene are telling the crowd, the people who are gathered there, that if tell your loved ones, if they're in that building, to get a wet cloth over their face and get out. Don't wait. And if you get a call from a relative who's inside that building, tell them to self-evacuate and not to wait for the brigade. Uh, the London Fire Brigade, the latest update from them, it's on their Facebook page, and they say that 45 engines and over 200 firefighters and officers have been called to a tower block fire. It's on the Lancaster West Estate in North Kensington. It happened this morning. The brigade received multiple calls. The fire is from the second floor to the top floor, and you can see these are live pictures of that tower. So the second floor up to the top floor. The assistant commissioner of the London Fire Brigade, Dan Daly, has said, firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are working extremely hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. This is a large and very serious incident, and we have deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances. The brigade was called at about 10 to 1. They're still at the scene. There are fire crews from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington and from surrounding fire stations. They're there. They say the cause of the fire is not known at this stage. But Ashish, you spoke to a resident who was in that building at the very beginning or what he thought was at the very beginning of this fire. Yeah, Maha the Eagle, he's um, a, a resident in um, the Granville Tower estate. Uh, he lives on the fourth floor. He thinks 
that a neighbor told him the fire started um, on, on the, um, in, in the neighbor's flat because of an exploding electrical appliance. We simply don't know whether that's true, but it's, it's the truth as far as um, Mr. Egal is concerned. So he would have been very close to the, the start of the fire, and that's why he was able to evacuate his family very quickly. But then as soon as he did, he didn't um, hang around, wait to, to collect any possessions. He, you know, he told his wife and his children to leave as quickly as they could. And he said um, by the time they'd evacuated, the, the fire had spread very, very quickly and that they were still receiving calls from people who were trapped inside the building waiting to be evacuated. But he, he expressed some concerns about just how fireproof or how many of the health and safety regulations as far as uh, uh, multi-story occupancy buildings like this um, have, um, how many of those would be valid. But that's, that's a, a question which will have to be addressed later. As I'm speaking now, there are more firefighters and police officers who are just turning up. I expect um, most of the fire stations in and around West London are here on site and are carrying their um, breathing apparatus and specialist equipment. I see lots of masks and, and they are preparing, I suppose, to try and get as close or inside the, the lower part of the building. But lots of residents have, have said that they're worried about this building coming down. Um, it depends on really how, how badly damaged the, the structure has been by the fire or what we're seeing inside um, now is, is the, you know, the, the, last, uh, the last minutes of the, of the fire burning itself out. But certainly it doesn't look like it's under control. And this is 24 stories you know, with um, you know, fully furnished uh, apartments and houses and homes. So there will be a lot of material in there that, that is still alive. OK, well, we're looking at live pictures now of a 27-storey apartment block that is on fire in West London. It's in Ladbroke Grove. It's on Latimer Road, if you know that area, near the Westfield Shopping Mall. Ashish Joshi, our senior correspondent, is there. It's a densely packed neighbourhood. There would have been hundreds, there are hundreds of people on the street now, Ashish. But tell us about the time. It comes during Ramadan. So do you think that people would have been awake at yes. that time? It was at quarter yeah, to yeah, one well, in the morning. That's, that's, that's certainly... Uh, what I was told by uh, a few of the residents who had been evacuated. And by the time I turned up, at, uh, I was here at about 3 o'clock. There, there were hundreds and hundreds of people on the street who looked like they'd been awake for a while. So this is the fasting month of Ramadan. This is um, a community which has a large concentration of Muslim families. and They would have broken their fast and, and then they would have been up uh, most of the night uh, preparing to go back to sleep or wake up again uh, so they could eat before their um, fast began again at sunrise. Now, that was certainly true in the, in the case of the one witness I spoke to, and he, he said that lots of people were up because it's a Ramadan and, and they were uh, preparing um, for their fast for later today. So if that is true, uh, that would have saved many, many lives. Uh, they would have... It, this is a fire that broke in the middle of the night at about 12.30, quarter to one. Uh, families who would have been in their beds unaware of exactly what was happening unless they were woken by neighbours or by the emergency services. OK, Ashish, just stay with us and let's listen now to Ashish's interview with the Mahe Degal. He told us that there, he believes that there are people still trapped in that tower. Just before 1 a.m., we got a huge knock on the door. Um, my wife and I was awake, our two kids were asleep. Um, it was a strange knock, so I kind of just went for it, you know, just to find out what it was about. There was no one at the end of the door. When I opened it, there was no one there. There was no one there. It's just a lot of smoke, it's just dark. And I slammed the door shut. They didn't even lock it or anything, I just slammed the shot so there's no more smoke coming in because I knew I don't want the kids to suffocate and stuff. It's too much. So this is the second incident that I personally have been in where there was fire. So I thought, well, this is just something I, I knew how to handle. So I just got towels. I waited it out before I walked walk the kids out with wet towels. In my hand, screaming down the whole, whole way to the wife. She's in the living room. So I just screamed out. I said, hey, there's fire. Like, 
literally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. This fire, like uh, people on the left hand side of the building were screaming out, "Help us!" Sticking their heads out of the window. People were waving phones for, you know, for invisibility because there's so much smoke coming around there now. The left hand side caught smoke really fast. I think due to the it's hard to speculate now, but I would say the, the cladding and all these fixes is what caused the fire to just erupt in under do you an know hour. There are people still inside. We do know. We do know. There's How people. Know? We've received phone calls. We've received phone calls. We've got family and friends still in there. There is someone trapped in the 81. Five-year-old girl. We wish her all the best, man. Honestly, man. We wish her all the best. There's still some families coming out. There is more fire and more firefighters going in there with the oxygen tanks. Yeah and uh, first aid kids and all sorts of stuff. Well, that was Maher Egal, who was, um, who was a resident of that building, and he was talking to our senior correspondent, Ashish Joshi. Ashish joins me now on the phone from West London. And Ashish, it's now 4.40 in the morning, UK time. What is happening there now as people start waking up in that neighbourhood? I mean, do you I, have the, there must have been awake for quite some time now if they were woken up by the noise of 45 fire engines and 200 firefighters arriving on the scene. Uh, yeah, I expect that um, there aren't very many people who have uh, managed to sleep through this. But it is um, light now. There, there are more residents who are turning out. Um, and, and just, I've got to say, just standing around in silence and just uh, looking aghast at this tower block, which is still burning, that there are firefighters who are turning up and sprinting in um, all directions. Uh, you know, there will be a control and command center which has been set up deploying uh, the emergency services and the firefighters to where they're needed. But I'm just walking up towards the edge of the cord now where, where there are residents who are just looking on at, at what's happening and police officers on the scene. And then there are more firefighters who are actually heading in towards the building. But certainly it, the, the people I'm standing among here on the ground would have been the early people who have been evacuated yeah. and try, trying to talk to police officers, asking, asking why that they can't try and uh, get closer to the building. Obviously, this is very, very distressing for the people who are nearby, who, who, who have got friends who live in, in this tower block. This is an extremely... I know we say this all the time. Whenever a, a, there is an emergency like this, we talk about communities. But just to stress, I mean, in this area of West London, it, it's densely populated, tightly packed. Uh, it's full of uh, council estates and, and housing blocks. And, and people are, are very, very um, tight-knit. They all know each other. There are police officers who are now turning up with um, battering rams uh, leading firefighters up in towards the, the, the tower block now. So obviously they want to try and break down the doors and try and gain access to some of the properties inside. So the emergency services are working very closely together. There are, are people here with their, um, just their hands over their faces, scarcely able to believe what is happening now. OK, Ashish, well, just stay with me while I bring everyone up to date with what's going on. There's been a fire in West London. A 27-storey apartment block has caught fire. It happened at about quarter to one in the morning. Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, he's tweeted, and he has said a major incident has been declared at Grenfell Tower in Kensington. 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters at the scene follow at London Fire for updates. And at London Fire is the London Fire Brigade. And I'll bring you the latest from there. In terms of casualties, in terms of the people that we have, um, in terms of the people um, who are in that building, we've had a witness who has said that police, this was about 16 minutes ago, police have been telling the crowd that have gathered, there is a cordon around this building and from what we understand it's moving further and further away from that building. And police have been telling the crowd, tell your loved ones to get a wet cloth over their face and get out, do not wait. They've also been telling the crowd, if you get a call from a relative inside, 
tell them to self-evacuate, don't wait for the brigade. In terms of the London Fire Brigade, they've got 45 engines there and over 200 firefighters. And uh, Ashish Joshi, who's on the scene, has told us that more people, more firefighters are on their way. He sees more coming. The Met Police have also tweeted. They've said that uh, residents continue to be evacuated from the Tower Block fire in North Kensington. A number of people are being treated for a range of injuries. So that is all we have on the people who are in that tower that they're, being, they're still being evacuated. There are a number of people being treated for a range of injuries. As soon as we have any more on, the, um, on that, we will bring it to you. But let me just um, bring you up to date with what has happened. This is in West London. There's been a fire in a 27-storey apartment building. It's gone from the second floor up to the top floor. People are still being evacuated. That's what the Met Police are saying. It's 4.44 in the morning here in the UK. People are waking up. Let me give you a sense of the geography. This is in Ladbrook Grove in West London. This building, Grenfell Tower, is on Latimer Road. It's part of the Lancaster West Estate in W11, and an evacuation process is underway. Let me bring in um, my colleague, Cla colleague excuse me, Claudia Liza. She joins me here in the studio. And Claudia Liza, 4.44, people are waking up to this news. Um, what is the latest? Yeah, thanks so much, I'm Kimberly. Um, as you've been saying, 200 firefighters are now um, attending the scene in North Kensington after a fire broke out on an estate there on the, the Grenfell Tower, 27-storey tower. It started from the, the second floor and it's gone all the way up to the 27th floor. As you can see, it's completely um, engulfed in this blaze and around 200 firefighters are there around 40 to 45 fire engines um, attending the scene as this fire broke out. Now, it did break out just around one o'clock this morning and where fire, the London Fire Brigade received a number of calls. Um, so they said just being told um, about this fire, they attended that scene. However, eyewitnesses have reported that once this fire did start, it moved ever so quickly and began to take over the rest of the building. Now, some people were able to become evacuated. We've spoken to a few of them here on Sky News. Um, our reporter, um, Ashish Joshi, spoke to one eyewitness who described what it was like being inside. Now, he said he heard an appliance from, from what he was saying an appliance go off and explode he was suggesting that potentially this could have started the fire we are, still don't know an investigation will obviously need to take place to find out exactly how this fire did start but he reported that he heard an explosion and the fact is he actually said also that there had been a fire at this estate before so he more or less knew exactly what to do now he was already awake um, in the middle of the night he was practicing um, Eid it was it's Ramadan so he'd already been awake in the middle of the night when this happened so potentially could this have saved his life is this the reason why he was able to evacuate himself and the rest of um, his family who were also in the building with him however he was able to escape but he did tell our reporter Ashley Joshi that there could could be potentially more people in there. He said that quite adamantly, largely because he was speaking to people um, in the building via um, mobile phones who told him that they were still in there and they were trying to get out. Now, the advice firefighters have been giving people, given the nature of this fire, actually rising to the, the 27th floor of this building, firefighters literally might not be unable to get to the top um, of that building. We have seen um, some crew, some equipment reach some parts of that building, but not to the very top. So they are advising people not to wait to actually get out and get a hot, hot sorry, rather a wet flannel, wrap it around their face and to get out. That is the latest advice um, from London Fire Brigade but as you can as you can see there this fire um, is engulf has, has engulfed this building this building in West London it's a tower block in West London in North Kensington to be precise um, not too far off from the, the Westfield Shopping Centre, um, bang in the middle of Labrick Grove, um, which is right next to uh, North, um, right next to Holland Park and Notting Hill Gate. But this this fire is now in, in, has engulfed this building in West London. And as I've said, 200 firefighters are attending the scene, um, around 40 to 45 um, 
fire engines that are also there. Now, we just get the latest from police who are saying a number of people um, are being treated for a, a range of injuries, um, including um, smoke inhalation. And we've also had details um, coming in from witnesses. Um, one witness who spoke to Sky News, Mahad um, Egal, just described how he was able to, to actually escape that fire. He managed to, to get out after he said he heard an explosion um, in a... In a, in a property next door, an appliance he believes could have potentially started the fire. Of course, that hasn't been verified. We are going to have to wait until um, an investigation um, actually establishes what exactly happened. Um, but Metropolitan Police um, say they are continuing to evacuate people um, from this um, massive um, tower block fire. This is the latest we are getting um, from the Metropolitan Police. Um, they are saying the reports of um, people being trapped inside this um, burning building. Um, as I said, we spoke to one eyewitness who said he was very adamant that there were people still inside this um, tower block. He said he had spoken to people and the advice that firefighters are telling people is to get out. Now, let's get the latest um, from um, London Fire Brigade. They've been posting an update um, of this fire and how they are tackling it um, on social media. On Facebook, they've confirmed that 40 fire engines and over 200 firefighters and officers have been called to a tower block on the Lancaster West Estate in North Kensington this morning. And this fire, um, apparently they've got reports of this fire at around one o'clock this morning. The brigade has received multiple calls. The fire is from the second floor to the top floor of the 27 floor building. Now this um, from the Assistant Commissioner Dan Daly. Now he said firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are working incredibly hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. This is a large and very serious incident and we have deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances. Now, they've confirmed that the brigade were called at around um, 5 to 1 this morning and is still at the scene. Fire crews from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington and from surrounding fire stations are in attendance. And he's gone on to say that the cause of the fire is not yet known at this stage. But police have also um, confirmed that a number of people um, are being treated for a variety of, of injuries, um, injuries which include smoke inhalation. Um, and they've also tweeted saying residents continue to be evacuated from the tower block um, in North Kensington. A number of people are being treated, as I said, for a number of injuries. Now, we've also had a tweet from the London Mayor, Mayor Sadiq Khan. Now, he's confirmed that a major incident has been declared at Grenfell Tower in Kensington. 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters are at the scene. So, so let's bring you up to date. Then we are dealing with um, a large, a massive fire at a tower block in West London, the Grenfell um, Tower block. And as you can see there, this fire has engulfed um, a large proportion of this building. Um, firefighters, London Fire Brigade saying it's the fire starts from the second floor all the way to the top of this 27 storey building. Now, we were getting reports here at Sky News that the, in the middle of the night, um, Kimberly Leonard was reporting that this fire started out with just a few, just a few floors and it's actually just continued to, to spread to the rest of the floors on this 27 block um, building. Now, we've had a numerous footage that's coming, on, coming into us um, from social media showing the building being engulfed with the fire. And what was really interesting about that, you also saw buildings with the, the lights are turned on. This is happening in the middle of the night and you could just assume that potentially some people were turning the lights on to reports of this fire or couldn't get a sense of there's an incident at that building. So you did see um, some you did see activity within the building, whether there are um, people still trapped there. We've got reports from one eyewitness saying that he believed he was very adamant that there were people still engulfed um, in this fire in the building because he said he was speaking to, to family and friends and he was just saying that, you know, he prayed. Um, he'd just been practicing um, Ramadan. It's, it's Eid right now. It's not that. It's, let me correct you. Oh, please. It's, thank uh, you, Kimberly. So people would have been breaking their fast. And let me pick up um, on that incident. Um, that uh, the uh, reports of people who were in the building, who are still in the building, and we've had witnesses on the scene saying that... Um, Police have been talking to the crowd who have gathered there. There is a cordon. It's being moved further and further away from that building. But the police have been telling the crowd that if you get a call from a relative who's inside, 
that building, tell them to self-evacuate. Don't wait for the brigade. They've also said, tell your loved ones if they're calling you from inside that building um, to get a wet cloth over your face and get out. Don't wait. And this would back up what Mahadigal, one of the residences of Grenfell, residences of, of Grenfell Tower, was telling our senior correspondent, Ashish Joshi, who's on the scene, that people were calling him from inside that tower. Let's go to West London now, where Ashish Joshi is. And Ashish, um, people are beginning to wake up. It's nearly five o'clock in the morning now. What's happening there? Uh, there are people outside the cordon who are looking on. The fire service is continuing to do the best it can to try and bring this horrendous blaze un under control. But it does look like, I mean, it's certainly not the raging inferno. It was, say, an hour and a half ago when I first got here. But um, it, it's still it's still smoldering. You can see from the pictures that the it's still burning. So the most important thing really is for the emergency services and the firefighters to make sure that the building has been evacuated, that they've taken away as many of the residents that they could reach uh, and take them away from um, this tower. But certainly, there are, there are, I'm standing underneath the, the, the block now, and it, it's, it's still burning. There are, you know, the fire's gone straight to the the top of the 24 stories and there are people who are just leaving their homes now just just to look uh, at, at what has un unfolded in front of them you know they, they would have known people inside these would have been uh, families who, who would have been at the same schools and, and used the same um, community resources that, that are here there are lots and lots of council uh, flats and blocks and housing estates around the tower so everyone here would have known somebody who's been affected by that fire inside and when, when i was speaking to residents who've been evacuated uh, they have only the clothes that they're wearing so everything they own would have been inside that tower block when, when it uh, went up in flames in the early hours of this morning or in the middle of the night so even now people are just, just standing around just looking and the sense of helplessness, uh, hands over mouths, looking on in shock and horror, and at, at the wreck um, that is this, this big block of uh, singed building, which is just, it, and to, to look at it is absolutely horrifying. And there, there is debris falling away from parts of the building now, but it, it does look like the structure itself has um, remained intact and that uh, for the fire services is a remarkable achievement because that would have been the main worry for a block this size had come down around um, or, or parts of this building had come down around there, there would have been um, much more devastation because there are there are houses and, and uh, buildings right around this tower block okay Ashish will stay with us we're going to hear now from two people who live close to the fire, they spoke to Sky News earlier and said that they could hear people screaming from the building. You heard from everyone inside. You know, but you, you were talking... My son woke me up at um, about quarter to two this morning to say that the tower block was on fire. And then when I, when I, when I, I could see it from my garden, it was just the, the left-hand side piece there, just a couple of floors. And over the hours, it's just it's spread. Just spread, spread like... And it's gone round the, um, the left of the building as well. Yeah. And... Well, I just can't believe the way it's gone it's, up so it's quick. Spread so, it's spread so, but you can hear, you can hear people. There's been, we've been, I, I mean, I live down in, it's down there, about a five minute walk away, and we could hear people screaming, help me, help me, and flashing their phone lights to let people know that they were there. Yeah, but there's nothing, there's, you're just helpless, so we've just come we've out. We've just, just been asked to bring up water to the, the people that have come out just to the sports the centre. Solution. There's a sports centre around there, and we just, they let us through the cordons to bring up loads of bottles of water. That was two ladies you were hearing from there. They were witnesses and they live very close to this Grenfell Tower. And that is what is left of Grenfell Tower this morning. We are live in West London where there's been a fire in an apartment block, a 27-storey apartment block. Police say it went from the second floor up to the very top. There are reports that there are still people trapped in that tower. Police on the scene have been telling the crowd that if you get telephone calls from people within that building, just tell them 
to get out. They have to self-evacuate and don't wait for the London Fire Brigade. Tell your loved ones to get a wet cloth over their face and get out. Don't wait. Let me just update you. The London Fire Brigade is saying that 45 engines and over 200 firefighters and officers have been were called to that tower block. It's in Lancaster West Estate, which is in North Kensington. The fire broke out at about quarter to one, 10 to one in the morning. Um, they were called, the brigade was called at 10 to one in the morning. They're still on that scene. We've had fire crews from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington and from surrounding fire stations in attendance. The cause of the fire is not known at this stage. The Met Police, they've tweeted and they have said that residents continue to be evacuated from the tower block. A number of people are being treated from a range, for a range of injuries. So that is what we're hearing. Initially, we heard that two people were being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation. And the Met Police um, in the last hour have come out and said that a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries. So a fire in West London in a 27-storey apartment block. It's in White City on Latimer Road near White City in Ladbrook Grove. We have people on the scene. We have the latest for you here on Sky News. From what we understand, an evacuation process is still underway. Police have been telling the crowd, to, if you hear from people, loved ones in that building, tell them to get a wet cloth over their face and get out. It is five o'clock here in the UK. This is live from West London. We've got two angles for you there. So you, to give you a sense of just the destruction of this fire, we've had the London Fire Brigade say that they have specialist equipment, firefighters wearing breathing apparatus. They're working extremely hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. It's very large. It's a very serious incident. And we've deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances. The brigade was called at 10 to 1. They're still at the scene. The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, he has tweeted and he has said this is a major incident. He's declared it a major incident at Grenfell Tower in Kensington and he has said that there are 40 fire engines and 200 firefighters at the scene and he's advised, this is Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, advising you to follow at London Fire on Twitter for updates. Claudia Liza joins me now, my colleague. Claudia, what is the latest? Yeah, so let's then talk about exactly what we do know so far this morning. Well, London Fire Brigade were first called um, just around one o'clock this morning. It was around five um, two one to the Grenfell Tower in Latimer Road. This is in Labrooke Grove. Now, the building in North Kensington is at least 24 storeys high. Um, we understand it to be 27 storeys high. It's, the fire has started, it's working its way up from the second floor all the way up to the top of that tower block. 40 fire engines containing more than 200 firefighters are now attending the scene fighting this major fire. Police have said a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries including two people for smoke okay, Claudia, inhalation, Liza, no details of casualties. You. We're going to go straight to Ashish Joshi, he's at the scene. Ashish, what update do you have for us? With a group of residents just underneath the, the, the towel block, I can see uh, a resident who's inside and he's coming to the window, the, speaking to the, uh, the residents who've been watching, um, hoping that the emergency services can get to him uh, what, what, one of the residents I was standing next to just now who's been watching this said um, he seems very calm for now. He was drinking water a little earlier. He keeps pacing up and down inside. And then he does come to the window. We can see him quite clearly from where I am at the moment um, looking out. And it, it's very difficult to explain. But if, if you think about the, the tower block, and I'm looking at, at one side of it, it's almost as if the building has been affected by the fire um, um, in three, three quarters of the building, but a quarter of the building near the left-hand side bottom where his flat is doesn't seem to be affected. So he, he is surrounded by fire uh, to the top and to his left-hand side, but nothing immediately below him. And it's difficult to tell. I must be a couple of hundred metres away from him, but he does seem uh, quite calm. He's pacing up and down inside, and he's walking towards the window, drinking a glass of water. And um, the, the hope is now that the emergency services would know he's there, have identified exactly 
where he is and, and can get to him quickly. Okay, Ashish, thank you very much. Well, I just want to bring you an update from the London Ambulance Service and the Assistant Director of Operations there, Stuart Crichton, has said, we were called at 1.29 a.m. to reports of a fire at Lancaster West Estate. We've sent a number of resources to the scene, including our hazardous area response team and over 20 ambulance crews. We're working closely with the London Fire Brigade and the Met Police, with our priority being to get people to safety and ensure they receive the medical help as quickly as possible. Our initial priority is to assess the level and nature of injuries and ensure those in the most need are treated first and taken to hospital. More information will follow when we have it. So we were just hearing there from Ashish Joshi, who's on the scene in North Kensington in West London, saying that they are in contact. There are uh, people, residents from that um, tower who are in contact with someone who is in the tower currently. We've heard from the Met Police that there is an ongoing evacu evacuation process, but they have told people that if you hear from people trapped in the tower, get them to self-evacuate if they can, put a wet cloth over their mouths and get out. Do not wait for the fire brigade. Let's listen now to, from Mahad Igal. He spoke to Ashish Joshi a bit earlier and he was explaining that he feared that there were people trapped in the tower. Just before 1 a.m. we got a huge knock on the door. Um, my wife and I was awake, our two kids were asleep. Um, it was a strange knock, so I kind of just went for it, you know, just find out what it was about. There was no one at the end of the door. When I opened it, there was no one else, there was no one there. It's just a lot of smoke, it's just dark. And I slammed the door shut. Didn't even lock it or anything, I just slammed it shut. So there's no more smoke coming in because I knew I don't want the kids to suffocate and stuff. It's just too much. So this is the second incident that I personally have been in where there was fire. So I thought, well, this is just something I, I knew how to handle. So I just got towels. I weighed it out before I walked walk the kids up. Wet towels. In my hand, screaming down the whole, whole way to the wife. She's in the living room. So I screamed out. I said, hey, there's fire. Like, Literally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. There's fire. Like, uh, people on the left-hand side of the building were screaming out, help us, sticking their heads out the window. People were waving phones for, you know, for invisibility because there's so much smoke coming around right now. The left-hand side caught smoke really fast. I think it's due to the, it's, it's hard to speculate now, but I would say it's the, the cladding and all this fixes is what caused the fire to just erupt in under an hour. there are people still inside? We do know, we do know there's do people. Know? We've received phone calls, we've received phone calls. We've got family and friends still in there. There is someone trapped in 81, five-year-old girl. We wish her all the best, man, honestly, man. We wish her all the best. There's still some families coming out. There is more fire brigade and more firefighters going in there with the oxygen tanks and the uh, first aid kits and all sorts of stuff. My son woke me up at um, about quarter to two this morning to say that the tower block was on fire. And then when I, when I, when I, I could see it from my garden, it was just the, the left-hand side piece there, just a couple of floors. And over the hours, it's just it's spread. Just spread, spread like. And it's gone round the, um, the left of the building as well. Yeah. And, well, I just can't believe the way it's gone it's, up it's so quick. Spread so, it's spread so but you could hear you can hear people. There's been we've been I, I mean I live down in it's down there like about a five minute walk away and we could hear people screaming, help me, help me and flashing their phone lights to let people know that they were there. But there's it's nothing, just, there's, you just help this, so we've just well, come we've out. We've just been asked to bring up water to the, the people that have come out to the, the sports centre. Solution. There's a sports centre around there, and we just they let us through the cordons to bring up loads of bottles of water. I mean, we've been watching this now for, for, a, for a long time, and the fire has spread all over the building now. Like the whole building is, has been totally engulfed. It's, it's, it's gone. There's like a tiny little bit left that hasn't been on, that's not on fire. Um, but it's it's just swept through the whole the whole thing, um, and there's there's hardly anything left of the building now. Tim, explain to us when you first saw it. What when were you first made aware of what was going on? Uh, it was probably about two o'clock, um, and then woken up by just the incredible noise of sirens and helicopters and shouting. Um, so we just looked out of our window and suddenly to see to see it just on fire, a whole side. All, all 27 stories of it just up in flames. Um, and just the smell, the burning that you could smell when the wind changed and the heat, even from where, when, where, where we are, the heat was extraordinary. Um, yeah, and that's how, we, that's how we first saw it. And I mean, I've never seen a building this size 
on fire ever. I've never seen a fire like it in all the time I've lived in London. You say it's at the end of your road. How far away from you is it? Um, it's probably 600 metres, 700 metres away. And in terms of the geography and in terms of the side of the building that was initially on fire, because you're the third person now who's told us that it, was, it started on one side and then spread to the rest, where, what side was that? Um, it's the side that was the closest to the Kensington Leisure Centre from, where, from what I saw. So where I see it, that side of the building wasn't on fire, it was the other side. Um, but now I've just watched it as, it as the fire has just wrapped itself around and just engulfed the whole the whole thing. I mean, from what I have heard just from people on the street, is it started on the, on the fourth floor and it's just spread all the way up and around and over the whole, the whole thing. So uh, have you spoken to people who are in that building? Um, I've spoken to uh, uh, some families of other, of families of families that were in that building as we've been told to bring water. There was a little shop just at the corner of the street that's just opened up and we've been taking uh, crates and cartons of, uh, of water and clothes as well. These people have just come out in, in their, in their, uh, you know, their pajamas. There's nothing on their feet. So we've just been bringing coats and shoes and things like that down to the cordon where the police have taken them. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I've seen people just with outside with their kids just holding uh, dogs and cats, mm. just bemused, just so shaken. I mean, that's your entire life. You're just sitting there watching your entire life go up in flames. It happened nearly three hours ago. That's when the police said they had the first, the initial report when they were called to that scene. Um, mm. wh what is the scene now? Are, they, are the people still at the bottom of that building? Is there a cordon around it? What's, what's happening now? Yeah, there's a cordon all the way, all the way around. Um, they seem to have, I mean, I, I hope they've got everybody out. I mean, they've, mm. they've taken everybody out. I think they're probably taken them to the, the leisure centre, which is the closest um, to it. Um, but the building is pretty much burnt out. There's a tiny bit left that's not on fire, um, but every single window is gutted. It, I mean, it must be a matter yeah. of time before the thing falls down. There's just nothing, there's nothing left of it. There's debris falling off it. Um, and it, yeah, the acrid smell is horrendous and yeah. Can you, can you just explain to us what that, that area is like for people not, uh, who haven't really been around there? What is that area like, Lancaster West Estate? Um, it's, it's, it's got a very high density population. I think there was about 200 families or something that lived in that, that lived in that block. The streets around are very, very narrow. They're all quite, all, they're quite a Victorian layout. Um, I mean, the problem is that we've had a lot of roadworks recently on the main road. There's been a um, gas works going on and it's diverted all the main traffic off that main road through these little side roads. So even just on a normal day, these roads are totally blocked, let alone trying to bring six or seven fire engines and ambulances and police cars down it. it I think that must have hampered it in, in, in some way, just in you know, the, the speed of getting close, because you, you physically, some of these roads, you physically couldn't get a fire engine down, um, but with cars parked on, on both sides. So you've been listening there to witnesses that I spoke to earlier regarding this fire in Grenfell Tower in West London. Let's talk now to Sophia, who is a witness. Sophia, can you hear me? Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Where were you yes, when the hello. fire broke out? Um, I was inside my flat. Oh, gosh, sorry. Some people, I think, have found someone that survived sorry, next door, next to me. Um, yeah, I was in the flat just parallel, um, so it's like immediately in front. Um, at about one o'clock, I would see, okay, someone has apparently come out of the window. Um, I, I, at about one o'clock, I saw, um, I heard loads of um, sound, popping sounds. It sounded like someone was shooting. Um, and so I, and then I heard loads of sirens. I assume they were police sirens, but then there were just more and more of them. And the, the banging sounds got louder and they didn't go away. Um, and then basically I ascertained that this was something serious. So I tried to look out the window, see what was happening kept looking down. Um, I didn't realize to look up. When I looked up, I saw about half the building on fire from top to bottom. Um, a five -year I've just been told it's a five-year-old girl that, that has been taken out of the building. Um, and um, basically, uh, after that, I literally, by about 1.30, 1 I was right in front, just seeing if there was any way I could help, if, you know, what was happening. And the whole building set ablaze very quickly after that. 
Um, I would say definitely by two o'clock, it was almost as if the whole building was on fire and burning through. Um, I can tell you now that that a lot of it has burnt out completely, but there are some windows, uh, some flats that are still blazing. Um, There's actually a man that we can see from a window. One of the local residents has binoculars, and we can see a man from a window um, trying to get attention of the, the fire brigade. And one of the local residents went to make sure that they knew that person was there. And they are aware he's there and they're trying to attempt to use a crane to reach him. So there are still some people alive inside. Earlier on today, I was inside. I I was going around the other side of the building. I heard loads of little girls screaming for help. I also heard men yelling, help, help, like extended, long, completely just horrific, horrific. And in between bursts of popping sounds, like explosions, um, and pieces of uh, material, like large pieces, as well as smaller pieces of ashes just stripping off the building and, and falling to the ground nearby, but also um, reaching some of the, the people standing when I was standing on the side of right next to Latimer Road train station. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I've seen. I've also heard stories of um, people that have called from inside the flats and told their family members living elsewhere that they're not going to make it. I heard that one lady had to leave her disabled family inside the building to to escape. Um, Just really horrific, tragic stories, really. Um, And it's very personal because everybody in this community, this is a a densely populated area. Um, There are loads of families with young people, and everybody knows everybody else. People have family members and friends in that building, and they're witnessing it firsthand. Okay, Sophia, just stay on the line just very quickly. The Met Police have issued a travel update. They said the A4 is closed in, closed in both directions. Following that fire, please avoid the area to allow emergency services access to this scene. Um, so the A4 is closed in both directions following that fire. Sophia, I just want to come back to you and pick up on something you said. You spoke of community. Give me a sense of what would have been going on at that time 12.30, quarter um, to one in the morning, given that it's Ramadan, the, um, the Muslim month of fasting, what would have been happening at that time? Would have lots of people been awake in their flats, out on the streets, um, breaking fast? Yeah. What would have been happening? Yeah, people would be inside their houses. Some people, we would have, um, so I'm, I'm Muslim myself, um, I had just eaten at 9.30ish and um, I couldn't sleep, so suddenly I had a burst of energy after having all this food that I hadn't had throughout the day. And people are trying to drink water. Some people are at prayers. A lot of men are at prayers in North. Um, and um, people just generally are not expecting something like this to happen. A lot of people living inside Grenville Tower are Muslim. There are Somali families, Moroccan families, there are Eritrean families, a Lebanese family, apparently I heard. Um, so, so, yeah, people uh, are preparing then um, at around... 2.30ish in the morning to, uh, to start fasting. Um, but we just literally couldn't. We didn't eat. We usually would eat a little meal, light meal, but we couldn't. No one no, 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 to focus. Everybody was completely transfixed. Everyone in the surrounding houses was just outside, um, just staring at the building in shock, people holding their heads in their, ar- in their arms, people shaking, people wailing because their family members are in there and they can't get through to them. They're not answering their phones. Um, people, you know, we're hearing people screaming, help, help. And we're seeing the fire um, spread throughout the building and then fully engulf the building. So, the, you know, the sense of community was that as well. You know, we had people of all different social classes, people living in council states, uh, low-rise buildings, as well as people living in, you know, terrace housing, coming and looking and just transfixed and shocked. And the general feeling amongst everyone was just shock. Everybody's shocked. Everybody's sad, everybody is horrified that we were witnessing people dying, basically. That, that I think, was the, the main feeling, and just everybody hoping for the, beyond hope that pe- someone, people, would be surviving. Um, but then everybody realizing that the, the, the shape of the building kind of makes it a bit of a death trap. I mean, really, beyond the 16th floor, I would say, it's probably, it's pretty much impossible. That has all burnt through. It's impossible for the fire brigade to reach there. I saw at the very beginning um, one water cannon um, putting out fire or try, attempting to call the blaze on one side, and that only went up to about the 16th floor. And that's where we can see a man at the window. Um, and, uh, and basically, but beyond that, it's just burnt through. Um, and I was surprised. I thought there would be some you know, plan in place, like perhaps 
So there would be something from a helicopter, maybe sand or water, a flyby from a plane or something. I don't know what I was hoping for, but I think everyone was hoping for a miracle because we just didn't want to think that so many families would be perishing in this way. Um, but uh, also I can tell you another piece of information um, that Kensington Aldridge Academy is immediately in front of this building. So there are loads of children that might be expecting to go to school today, and I would say to them, don't come, don't come near this area. Um, it, it, it's not safe, but we've heard that perhaps this building will collapse, and there's no saying which direction, so it wouldn't be really safe. Um, and also, um, there, there are local, area, local centres that people can go to, Latin the Christian Centre. Um, people might be able to go into the Kensington Leisure Centre as well if they need help or if they have nowhere else to go. Um, but, yeah, this, this is an absolute tragedy, and it highlights the need for greater safety protocols. Um, when the Kensington Aldridge Academy was built recently, I think it was completed last year or the year before, um, they basically redid the cladding on the outside of this building. And this cladding is what everybody has been saying in the community that has potentially been the reason that the fire has spread so quickly. If they'd had, you know, concrete cladding, perhaps, that, that, you know, it, as people speculate they had originally, okay. perhaps it wouldn't have spread so quickly. Okay, Sophia, Sophia, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, what is an extremely difficult time? Thank you so much. I want to bring you now, um, we've got an aerial still. There you go. That, is, that gives you a sense of where it is. That is an aerial still of Grenfell Tower, a huge plume of smoke. You can see the bottom of the building and just how much of that is destroyed now that the, um, the sun is coming up. Um, Mark White is on the phone. Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Hi, Mark. Morning to you. What can you tell us, Mark? Uh, yeah, I'm just in uh, one of the many streets, uh, Lockton Street, uh, just uh, about uh, 100 yards or so from the tower block itself. Uh, and there's a huge police cordon around here with um, probably about 100 or so local residents who have been in evacuated from their uh, building that overlook the, the tower block here uh, and brought down here. And just within the, the last couple of minutes, the police have uh, just tried to push the cordon back a little bit as they get a grip of uh, the area here and get more of their resources. And they're able to put a more sterile cordon around the block because clearly there has to be a concern now that this fire has been raging unchecked pretty much uh, since about 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, about the, the structural safety of that building itself. And I know that the emergency services uh, are now in the process of uh, talking to and consulting with structural, uh, structural engineers about just how safe this block uh, is likely to be as we go forward. As I say, um, uh, lots of uh, fire appliances here as well. Pretty much every single street that you go to, and I've been to uh, quite a few to get to this location, uh, there are fire appliances from all over London, from as far as this Whitechapel, I saw fire, uh, fire appliances, rescue appliances, there are high uh, aerial platform uh, units as well. But clearly, they're restricting the height they can get to. There's no way they can get to anywhere near a 27-storey tall building. They're uh, effective for the first few storeys, uh, and that, that is about it. Okay, Mark, just stay with me. Um, the former Chancellor and the uh, editor of the Evening Standard, George Osborne, he's tweeted, obviously, people waking up now to this news. George Osborne has said, just seen this awful tower block fire near my home in West London. My prayers with those affected yeah. and heroes yeah. tackling it. Mark, I want to pick up on a point you said. You spoke that there are fears for the structural integrity. But we've got Ashish Joshi on the ground there. He's seen someone trapped inside. What are they doing to help these people who are still in there? Unfortunately, uh, there's a big health and safety issue for emergency services as well. Of course, they want to get to anyone that might be trapped, but they're governed by a set of laws as well for their own protection. So their senior commanders uh, are only going to allow them to go in to try and rescue people uh, if it's safe to do so. Now, I don't know how high up this person was that Ashish saw and whether they're at all uh, reachable by the aerial platform ladders or whether uh, it's just too, they're, they're just too high up the building. If that's the case, then that's a real worry because you can, do, you can see uh, every single floor from the second floor to the 27th floor uh, has been affected severely by fire. Uh, so, and, and what I'm told is that the stairwells as well are all engulfed. So it's, it's difficult to see how 
if they can't reach by aerial platform, the fire brigade would actually be able to get up to someone. Did Ashish mention how high this person was up the building? Yes, if you, if you look at the building on the left side, down at the bottom, there are some flats that seem from the exterior still to be intact. And I believe from what Ashish was saying, this gentleman is in there. He's been on the phone. He's been trying to get people's attention. And uh, one of the people that Ashish was with went to the emergency services and t explained to them that they'd seen someone in there. So if you look at so the he's, building... He's not, we, he's not in the actual block of flats, is what you're telling me. It's a neighbouring building. No, no, he is in the block of flats. But if you look at the block of flats at the bottom, um, I can't count how many floors up. We're showing it now to sort of the left, down at the bottom... There are some um, flats that look f from the outside that they're still intact, and I believe from what Ashish was describing that the individual um, w is in those um, flats. Right, well, I mean, if that is then reachable by aerial platform, presumably... Uh, it looks, Mark, that it are is... Aware of this people. Mm, it looks that you could get there... F it looks like you could get there with, from an aerial platform. Yeah, well, it, it's clearly a worry. If there are, if there are still people inside... Certainly the early reports that we received suggested there were people up, uh, you know, the, the 11th floor and higher uh, who were waving out of windows. Now, whether they were able to be reached and brought to safety before the entire building effectively was engulfed in flames, uh, we simply don't know at this stage. Uh, the emergency services have enacted their major, um, their ma major event protocols, so uh, mm. it's a major incident. They're dealing with that. They will get information out to us as members of the press, but it'll take a while. Uh, Mark, have you been speaking to um, people who are in that building? How did they say they got out? Did they get out of their own accord, or did the firefighters, did they come in there and get them out? Yeah, where I am, uh, I've not seen anyone who was actually in the building. Uh, it's residents, really, from the, uh, the local area, and there are hundreds of those residents uh, who, really, since the early hours of the morning have been out of their uh, flats uh, for reasons of safety uh, and really just put it onto the street. I mean, someone come out because they want, uh, they're aware of all the commotion. There are helicopters flying above here, uh, fire engines on the streets and, and lots of noise. So some people have just come out for that reason. Others have actually been asked to leave their, their flats because of the close proximity to the tower block itself. So... The, the people I've seen, lots of people, yes, uh, confused and, and rather concerned about what's going on. Uh, some of them still effectively in their night clothes. Um, but no one uh, from the, the building itself have I seen at this stage. OK, Mark White, thank you very much. Um, just to bring you up to date with transport, this, uh, this building, Grenfell Tower, is in, Lan is in Lancaster West Estate. It's in Ladbrook Grove, close to Notting Hill, Holland Park, and it's close to the Ladbrook Grove and Latimer Road tube stations. Um, we've had an update from, from the Met Police, and they've said that the A4 is closed in both directions following this fire. Please avoid the area to allow emergency services access to the scene. And that, um, that is not only the roads, they're saying the whole area, just avoid it. They've got a cordon down. It's going um, further and further out as we speak. Um, Claudia Liza, my colleague, is with me. She has an update now. Claudia, what, uh, what do you have to tell us? Yeah, thanks, Kim. Let me just bring people up to date in terms of what they are seeing. You are seeing a fire um, at a block of flats in the Grenfell Tower on the Lancaster West Estate in West London. That's in Labrook Grove. Now, this fire... Um, as you can see, has engulfed the building. Now, it starts from the second floor right to the top of this 27-storey building. And you are seeing um, a lot of smoke. Now, reports we are getting in that the fire is actually calming down a little bit from the, from the bottom down, where the um, fire, firefighters have been able to, to reach the fire um, with, the, with the engines and the equipment that they have. So at the bottom of the, of the tower, you are seeing that actually they are making some ways in terms of tackling the fire. It's just reaching the the top and where they haven't been able to, to reach the very top um, levels of that st um, st tower that they are still as you're seeing they're still dealing with a fire but you are seeing this fire which has engulfed a building in west london the the grenfield um, tower on the lancaster west estate 200 firefighters are now at the scene 
40 fire engines are battling um, this large fire. And we are getting reports um, from police that they are dealing with a number of people who have been injured, largely um, for smoke inhalation. There's been no details of casualties, but we have spoken to witnesses who have told us that they have thought that there are people trapped um, in that building. And indeed, we've had our Sky News um, reporters at the scene saying that they know of um, potentially one person in that building trying to escape. They're saying they have seen one person trapped in there um, trying to get out of the building. Now, the, the advice um, firefighters and police are giving to people who potentially could still be trapped in that building is to get out. Do not wait. Do get out. Get a damp cloth, cover their faces um, and to make sure they leave the building. But yes, just to um, bring you up to date, London Fire Brigade were called um, just before one o'clock this morning um, to the Grenfell Tower on Latimer Road, which is on the Lancaster West um, Council Estate. Now, the building in North Kensington is around um, 27 storeys high. We do believe that that fire um, essentially engulfed um, the, the entirety um, of that building and um, bar a couple of floors um, at the base. Now, the building um, has seen 40 engines um, attending the scene. This is 40 fire engines from, from across um, fire brigades um, across London are now attending the scene with 200 firefighters um, tackling that blaze. And as I've said, police are, are saying that a number of people are being treated for a range of injuries, including two people for smoke inhalation. We've also had um, London Ambulance Service um, releasing a statement saying that they were called at around 1.30 this morning to reports of a fire at Lancaster West Estates. Then this isn't um, W11 in um, the um, Labrick Grove area of London. Now we've sent a number of resources to the scene, including our hazardous um, area response team and more than 20 ambulance crews. We're working closely with London Fire Brigade and the Metropolitan Police with, with, with our priority being to get people to safety and ensure they receive the medical help as quickly as possible. Our initial priority is to assess the level and nature of injuries and ensure those in the most need are treated first and taken to hospital. They will provide more information as and when they get that. But as it stands, we have got reports from police that a number of people have been injured. They are dealing with those people, um, potentially um, largely for smoke inhalations. There haven't been any reports of casualties um, as of yet. The fire, um, it does seem to, to look like firefighters are making way and tackling the fire, particularly at the bottom of the building. But as you get to the um, high levels where they had difficulty um, reaching the fire, um, that fire does still stand. It is still continuing. We've had the Metropolitan Police, as I said, they've um, tweeted an, an update saying residents continue to be evacuated from the tower block. A number of people are being treated for um, a range of injuries. We've also had the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, um, tweeting saying that he has now declared this a major incident um, at the Grenfell Tower in Kensington where 40 fire engines and um, 200 firefighters are tackling um, that blade. We've also been speaking to eyewitnesses at the scene. Um, they've said that one person in particular spoke to our um, correspondent Ashish Joshi saying that he managed to escape that blaze. He was um, already awake in the middle of the night and um, coming to the end um, of Eid, breaking his fast and so he was able to hear that fire um, as it seemed to have broke um, at the building. He was reportedly saying that he believes that it could have been started by an appliance um, which exploded. This hasn't been confirmed. An investigation will take place to find out the cause of the fire. But as he's un understood it, there was a, an explosion with an appliance. He was able to get his family out quickly. Um, at the time when Ashish um, Joshi, our reporter, um, our correspondent, spoke to him, he said that he believed there were people um, still trapped within the building, people that he was speaking to um, in the building, just saying that they were still inside the building and he needed them to, to get out as soon as possible. The advice that police are giving to anybody trapped in the building is to get out, not to wait for anybody, but to get out, see if they can get a damp cloth and leave the building as soon as possible. But this is the latest we are getting from West London and where a fire, where firefighters are tackling a fire on the Grenfell estate, which is on the, the Lancaster West um, Tower, um, Tower block in West London. We've also had um, an update, a travel update for anybody traveling in the area. And the A4 is closed in both directions yeah, and that is following that, that fire. Um, let me jump in there, apologies. Um, the Met Police have corrected themselves. It's actually not the A4, it's the A40. So the A40 is closed in both directions following this fire and uh, the Met Police are saying please avoid that area to allow the emergency services access to the scene because they are still working extremely hard to get this under control and get pe anyone who's still in that building 
out. Um, if you're just waking up, you're going to set off on your commute, an update from Transport from London. And they say there's no service between Hammersmith and Edgware Road on the Circle and Hammersmith and City Lines. And um, also the A40 is closed, as the Met Police have said, that, said there. So there is no service between Hammersmith and Edgware Road on the Circle and Hammersmith and City Lines. Um, an update on the building. This is Grenfell Tower. According to the building, it describes itself as having 120 homes. So one would assume that's 120 flats. It's 27 storeys high. It was built in 1974 and then it was renovated between 2015 and 2016. This is according to um, the association itself. In that, during that renovation, it was given new cladding and windows. And as we look at live pictures from West London, and as we've seen through the morning, this is a fire now that has been raging since 10 to 1 this morning. It's now 5.33 here in London. That's a point. lot of the debris has been falling off, falling away from that building. And the fire has been, it's, been got, it's gone from the second floor up, right up to the top. And as you can see just there on, in the left of your screen, there is still fire burning, you can see on the left of your screen, up at the top of the building. Fire services are still there. We've seen um, the hoses in action. And let's go, Claudia Eliza, you have um, someone we can hear Yes, from indeed. Let's, we, Sky News have been at the scene speaking to witnesses. And we've got one we've just spoken to. And Michael was at the scene and was able to, and was able to see that fire. Let's listen to him. It was, it was, it when were you woken up by the alarms? No, no, I, I wasn't woken up by the alarms at all. They were very, very quiet, the alarms. I was in bed. I was on the verge of falling asleep. And I smelled plastic. I've got up. I've looked around the flat, checked the plugs. Everything was OK. I went to the kitchen to smoke a cigarette. I've opened the window and I heard some woman saying it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger. So I've gone out to the hallway, I've looked through the spire hole, I see smoke everywhere. I've opened the door and the neighbours were there, the people screaming, the firemen said, get down the stairs. So I've grabbed the little girl, grabbed my girlfriend, ran out of the house, just in a pair of boxer shorts and a dressing gown. Someone gave me these clothes. And then this is it and now we're here. From Michael, one of the, the fortunate people who were able to escape as that fire, as you're seeing there at the um, Grandfield Tower, um, engulfed, engulfed the building. And um, he was able to say that he was able to get out, just quickly grabbed um, a dressing gown and was able to get out of that building. Um, indeed, before he or indeed anybody he was with were able to be um, injured. But we are speaking to um, a number of people who also were able to, to get out of the building. But Sky News have also um, reported and Sky News reporters on the scene are saying that potentially there could be um, one person trapped in that building. There are reports that they have seen um, one person in this building on the Grenfell Town, on the Lancaster West Estate, where 200 um, firefighters from fire crews across London have been tackling this blaze um, overnight. We got reports of this blaze um, just before one o'clock this morning, um, and 200 fire crews were sent there. Um, around um, 40 um, fire engines were sent to the building when they have been tackling that blaze. Um, as you can see there and um, smoke um, masses amounts of smoke and coming out from the building and um, however I have to say this is not as bad as what we were seeing um, earlier on this morning we saw earlier um, the blaze completely engulfing um, this building now we are just seeing smoke and um, largely a little bit of fire um, around but it's towards the bottom um, of that building where we once did see smoke it looks like firefighters are making ways and that's uh, they are tackling that fire and it looks like that fire has indeed calmed down but you are still seeing the fire at the top levels um, of that tower um, largely because of the inability I, I, I guess you could say for fire crews to reach that level which is why they are now advising people anybody who's trapped in that building to get out do not wait to, to be evacuated self-evacuate is the message that they are sending to anybody still caught up um, in that fire we haven't got any reports of casualties however we have heard of a number of people and um, from um, police from the ambulance service that there are a number of people who have been injured they are dealing with them largely for smoke inhalation okay claudia Lez, i just want uh, to talk about the community because we've heard a lot of the witnesses speaking this morning we've spoken to a couple of them over the phone we have reporters in west london at the scene and they've described the uh, the residents of this tower as predominantly um people of the muslim faith um of islam and they are 
this, at the moment, they are um, observing the holy month of Ramadan. So at that time of night, they would have been awake, just broken their fast. They would have either been outside the flats in the, uh, the restaurants down below, or they would have been in their flats uh, breaking fast. Um, we have had reports this morning of someone still trapped inside that building. Um, Sky News is on the scene, as I said, and our reporter Ashish Joshi has said that he has seen a man who's... Okay, the leader of Kensington and Chelsea Councils has, is joining us on the line. Good morning to you. Hello? Hello, could you hear, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, Nick, can you hear me? It's Kimberly from Sky. No, we're having some problems with that, but we will go there as soon as we can. Let me just bring you up to date with what an London Ambulance Service is saying. They were saying they were called at 1.29 this morning to reports of a fire at Lancaster West Estate. Um, they sent a number of resources to the scene, including our hazardous area response team and over 20 ambulance crews. We're working closely with the London Fire Brigade and the Metropolitan Police. Let's go. There you go. I mean, that gives you just a sense of how enormous this fire is. That's a helicopter circling, I can't tell you how many kilometres, how many miles away, but if you look at that, that's a tiny helicopter. That gives you a sense of the scale, that huge plume of smoke. This is a 27-storey apartment block building that is on fire in West London. 120 flats in that block. We have no word of injuries. What we're hearing is that a number of people are being treated for fire inhalation, for smoke inhalation, excuse me. Initially, we had reports of two people being treated, but then um, the police came out, the Met Police came out and said that the evacuation is still ongoing. And we believe that that evacu evacuation is still ongoing. Even now, three or four hours after this fire started, there are still people, our reporter on the scene has seen someone still inside that um, building. They're trying to get them out. Um, uh, just a quick update because people will be waking up now and uh, they're starting their commute. The A40 is closed in both directions, so don't try and take that. And in terms of the tube, the Hammersmith and City Line Transport for London is saying that there's no service between Hammersmith and Edgware Road on the circle and Hammersmith and City Lines. And the police say the A40 is closed in both directions due to that fire. Claudia Liza? Yeah, well, let's um, bring you up to date indeed of what is going on here. A major um, fire, something that a London Mayor Sadiq Khan is describing as a major incident. And this fire that broke out overnight, just um, just before one o'clock this morning, or indeed at least that is when um, fire, fire crew received um, calls from people that there is a fire um, on this estate. Now what you are seeing here is just massive plumes of smoke um, reaching the capital skies right now, um, which can just really gives you an idea Claudia, Liza, I'm of sorry the scale of this fire. I'm sorry to interrupt. We have that interview now. Nick Padding Brown, the, the leader of the Kensington and Chelsea Council. Good morning to you, Nick. Thank you very much for joining us. What is the latest? What can you tell us of what, 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 what's happening here in terms of the emergency response? Well, it's clearly an absolutely devastating uh, fire. Um, the emergency services and council support officers uh, have been here for a number of hours trying to support residents who've been evacuated. Uh, but there are still the emergency services working on the uh, on the fire and trying to establish if there are people still in the building. Um, the council is providing support to residents and people who've been uh, evacuated from their homes in nearby centres. And um, I think that's all I can tell you at this stage. Um, clearly, it's, a, it, it's an absolutely devastating fire. Indeed, Nick. Thank you very much um, for joining us. I just want to give an update, and that is that St. Clement and St. James's Church have opened their doors to people who've been evacuated and to other locals. So um, people can go there, St. James, uh, St. Clement and St. James Church. Nick, thank you very much. I mean, back to you, Nick. How many people um, lived in this tower? Do you have any idea? I believe we've... Oh, Nick, he's... Nick, can you hear me? Hello, Nick. Not very well. Could you speak up? There's a helicopter yes. overhead. I can't y hear you very well. Yes, no, I understand. It's a very dif dif uh, difficult circumstances. Right. How many people would have lived in this tower, Nick? This says about 120 homes. No, is that, you... Hello? Hello, is that Nick? Yes, speaking. Hello, Nick, it's Kimberly. I'm still with you. How many people would have lived in this tower? 
We're, we're establishing that at the moment, but several, several hundred will have been in there. But it's a question of establishing how many people were in there at the time of the fire. And, and what are you doing for the people the who've been evacuated, who've lost everything? Um, we've set up uh, emergency centres nearby, and uh, people have been evacuated to those, where we're providing as much support as we can. Um, and clearly, there will be further updates uh, throughout the day on what we're doing to um, support people. Uh, but at the moment, the emergency services have set up a big cordon around the area, and uh, it's quite hard to get um, uh, uh, accurate and uh, up-to-date information. Uh, but the council will be doing everything it can to work with uh, residents who've been evacuated. Can I ask? Uh, sorry, um, sorry, uh, um, Kimberley. Um, Nick, this is on Claudia Lies, also at Sky News. Can I just ask? Have you spoken to any residents at all? Have you spoken spoken to anybody who's actually been evacuated? Uh, well, we can see that some people have been evacuated and they're being uh, attended to by the emergency services and I don't think it's appropriate for them to be uh, interrupted by uh, talking to me. Uh, but we will be and the council will be um, providing support to people in the uh, emergency centres as soon as we can. But what? I think at the moment the, uh, the uh, main priority is to make the building safe and ensure that residents uh, that we can evacuate are evacuated. What about people inside? Do you know if there's anybody still um, in that building? I don't know. That's a matter for the emergency services, and obviously we're awaiting information uh, as to the latest position. And that's why right. you just mentioned it a moment ago. All thoughts and, and all work must be to make it, making sure that this structure is safe. Just looking at the, the severity of this fire, um, what do we know about the structure? Is, are there any worries that it, it could collapse? I'm really not in a position to um, answer any questions about the structure. Um, I don't know. It's clearly been a devastating fire. And uh, we will be awaiting an update from the uh, fire service who's been here. Uh, I think the local community, uh, the emergency services have all acted with, uh, with immense uh, uh, speed and provided all the support that they can to those who've been evacuated. But clearly there's a lot more work to do to make the building, uh, to evacuate the building mm. and to establish how safe it is. Uh, this is a very, very uh, severe fire. OK, um, you can talk about the building itself. Um, as a councillor, um, this building has actually just been refurbished just, just a couple of years ago. Had It was a basis of a, a multi-million pound refurbishment. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. Um, new heating, hot water system, windows, um, and uh, a major refurbishment. And uh, it, at that point, was, uh, uh, was inspected and... Uh, you know, we will have to await the uh, study as to what the cause of this has been. I mean, we've spoken to, to one eyewitness. He was very incre incredibly lucky. He was able to escape um, the building as the fire was breaking out, according to this eyewitness. And he did say, actually, this isn't anything new to the building. He has actually had to um, evacuate the building because of a fire um, before. Do you know of any fires um, at the Grenfell Tower previously? Uh, this is a very major fire. Um, there may have been individual um, flat fires there occasionally are, but I can't comment on that anymore at, at this stage. And I don't really think there's very much more I can say other than to uh, say that the emergency services are doing um, all that they can uh, to secure the building and evacuate people to safety. And there's really little more I can say at this stage. So. Thank Sir, you very much. I need to go now. So, where, where are you going? So, just very quickly, um, Councillor um, Nick, where, where exactly are you going to right now? What's the next steps for you? Done, we've lost him. That was um, Councillor Nick um, Paget Brown, Councillor for the Kensington and Chelsea um, area, just letting us know that. The main, the main priority is indeed to make sure that anybody injured um, are treated um, properly and by um, s services. He's also advising people um, that they need to evacuate. The next stage is also just to make sure that building is safe and nobody else is injured in this building. This is the Grenfell Tower, which is the basis of a major incident right now where firefighters, around 200 firefighters from across London are tackling a major blaze there. So we're just speaking to um, Councillor Nick um, Paggart-Brown. Um, who's saying that from what emergency services are, are telling him, um, it's essential that they tackle and deal with the people who've been injured um, in this. Um, have we just lost him, um, Jen?
just there, but we have also spoken to eyewitnesses who've told us exactly what happened and what unfolded, um, at least from their perspective, as that fire broke out. And as it did break out, they were very fortunate and lucky enough um, to grab the very basic things such as, um, um, such as bathrobes and just quickly evacuate the building. But one eyewitness we spoke to in particular um, said that though he was lucky enough um, to escape with his family, he knew of um, people still trapped inside the building. He was speaking to people um, within, the, within the building via mobile phone. Um, we'll hopefully get an update on that. But Sky News reporters on the scene have said that they think, they believe that one person, they've seen one person trapped in the building as some firefighters tackle that blaze. Now, as you can see there, it's a very, very tall and building, a massive building, 27 storeys high. And as you can see, fire, um, fire equipment is actually tackling that, that blaze and um, with waters reaching, gosh, um, just up to halfway of that building. And as you can see, the Earlier on, if you did um, catch it, the blaze was massive, just completely engulfed the whole of that building. But now you can see firefighters, they are making ways. They are um, actually dealing with the fire at, towards the bottom of the building. However, reaching the middle and the upper levels, which of course, as you can imagine, very difficult to get to. They haven't been able to, um, to br really bring, bring the, that fire down. Of course, they are tackling that. But, um, as I say, the latest, um, 40 fire engines are um, at this fire, around 200 firefighters who have been um, deployed from fire crews from across London are now tackling um, this fire. And the latest from the Assistant Commissioner of London Fire Brigade, Dan Daly, saying that firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are working extremely hard in very difficult conditions to tackle this fire. Um, as you can see there, it has been, um, this is a large and very serious incident. And we've deployed numerous resources and specialist appliances and um, crew work order just before one o'clock this morning. They are still, as you can see there at the scene and they have fire crews attending from North Kensington, Kensington, Hammersmith and Paddington. And indeed from surrounding fire stations are also there. Um, the, the cause of the fire, not known um, just yet. Of course, you can, as you can imagine, investigation will take place. But right now, the priority is indeed to make sure that nobody is in the building, to bring the fire, um, to actually end this fire, to bring this blaze down, and of course, to treat anybody who has been injured um, at, um, at this time. But we are getting to about 10 to 6 this morning. Anybody just um, waking up, um, as you can see, their fire crews are tackling a major fire um, at Grenfell Tower, which is in um, West London on Latimer Road in Labrook Grove. Um, now, as you can see, this fire is massive. You are seeing massive smoke coming out, but earlier, just, gosh, what, an hour, an hour and a half before, this building was completely engulfed in fire. Um, fire crews were at the scene um, as soon as they received multiple calls um, of this fire, and they are making ways. What you are seeing now is just massive plumes of smoke um, leaving this building. Um, the smoke has replaced what was a massive fire um, at this building. As you can see, their firefighters um, are making way. We've had um, the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, tweet declaring this a major incident um, right now um, in London, um, saying that indeed, just reiterating what fire crews and um, firefighters have been telling us, that 40 fire engines are at the scene, 200 firefighters there and tackling the blaze, and they do seem to be making ways. I guess the, the priority right now is to make sure anybody who has been injured um, in that fire um, get the necessary treatment and indeed make sure that people hopefully have been evacuated out of that building. We do have um, Sky News reporters and producers at the scene. They have said that they have seen potentially one person in that building. We will hopefully try and get an update um, from the scene just to find out what the latest might be on that situation. But as it stands, we do have um, more than more than 200 and fire crews and tackling and um, this fire and um, which is at the Granfield Tire at Lancaster West Estate in West London and we've also had an update from the London Ambulance Service they sent an update just around um, an hour or so ago saying that they were called at about 1.30 this morning to reports of a fire at the Lancaster West Estate the Lancaster West Estate which is in Labrick Grove and they've sent a number of resources to the scene including their hazardous area and response team and more than 20 ambulance crews. They say they're working closely with London Fire Brigade and the Metropolitan Police with our priority being to get people to safety and ensure they receive the right medical help as quickly as possible. Our initial priority is to assess the level and nature of injuries and ensure those in the most need are treated first and taken to hospital. That's the, the latest we are getting um, from the London Ambulance Service. And indeed, if you are 
on your way out this morning if you are indeed and um, will be using any any transportation in the in the West London area we've been told that the A40 has been closed in both directions as a result um, of this fire as fire crew um, tackle this fire and also if you are using um, London transport if you are using the true the Hammersmith and City um, lines um, and the circle Claudia Lies, lines I'm have been sorry affected. to interrupt you um, that information is of course up on the TFL website but I just want to interrupt you and go to uh, Mark White our correspondent he's at, a, at the Kensington Community Centre um, which is being used as an evacuation point Mark White um, what are people there telling you yeah, we're in the Harrow Club. It's one of a number of community centres and other buildings around the immediate vicinity of this tower block where local residents are being brought to. They've been taken out of their house, not just, of course, in the tower block itself, but uh, in some of the neighbouring buildings because of the concern that there is, understandably, about the potential for collapse of this building. We know that they're talking to... Uh, the emergency services are talking to structural engineers at the moment uh, to see what can be done. You can see uh, some of the elderly residents as well brought here uh, and they could be here for quite a bit of time but uh, they're being made very welcome here by the staff in this centre uh, given cups of tea and the like. We can actually talk now to a couple of residents who were evacuated from the tower block itself. Uh, Rook, Rook's uh, uh, Mamudu and her grandson T. Rooks, tell us, um, you, you were in the tower block itself. When did you become aware that something was happening? At about one o'clock, I woke up to pee. And I always opened my windows. Then I heard some unusual noise outside. So I peeped. Then I saw a lot of fire engines, policemen everywhere. So I stretched, I said to one of them, officer, what's going on? He said, fire, get out. So were, were the police not actually knocking on your door? Nobody knocked that? on my door. I woke to pee. Then I quickly woke my, my grandson, gave him his dressing gown. Then we ran downstairs and that's where we are now. And I mean, how large was the fire at that stage? There was smoke everywhere. I inhaled some smoke when I got out of the building. So it means it was, ex it was already at a big extent before I woke up. Maybe it was even the smoke that woke me up. Uh, how concerned are you that it wasn't the emergency services that, that, that actually managed to knock you up, that you came up yourself, that you, you woke up yourself? I woke to pee. Nobody woke me. Nobody. And, and, I asked questions from the window. And, and T, obviously, you were uh, asleep in your bed. Just tell yeah. us what happened. Um, Grandy woke me up. She said there was fire. I put on my shoes, my dressing gown, and went out. Um, there were lots of uh, fire trucks. Smoke. Lots of smoke. Um, and all the emergency services were already yeah, uh, arriving? Yeah, such as ambulances and police. Everything was there. They were yeah, there. Yeah, there were 200. And we've heard reports that some people might have been trapped in the building. Do you think that's possible? Very possible, because the staircase, where, when we were coming out, was already clouded with smoke. So if they couldn't go through the staircase, they can't go through the lift, there's no balcony for anybody to jump, of course they are there. Well, I mean, we certainly know from what you've told us that even at that early stage, just after one o'clock, uh, there was smoke everywhere? About ten minutes past one. And, and that smoke was, was it filling the stairwells? It filled the stairways. It was smoky when we got out. So, I mean, it's possible if people were on the upper floors, it, it might have been difficult for them to get down? Yes, definitely. Well, you're here now, obviously, in a place of, of safety. They're looking after you? Well, when we came in, there was some bananas, apples. Somebody gave us tea, a cup of tea. Fine. I mean, they are doing their best. But the other thing I would like to say is when we were outside waiting for evacuation to this place, we got a taxi. The whole street were blocked. People were coming to look at what is going on. 
and the people escaping from there could not have a way out. Uh, yeah, we know that the fire brigade had difficulty reaching the scene as well because yes, of all the It's difficult calls. for them to reach anywhere. And you were telling me uh, a little earlier, Luke, Rooks, that you, you've been in that building just six months, but it had been recently refurbished? Well, so we were told that it was refurbished. My flat is a new flat, which they said how many millions, I don't know, the council is newly refurbished. And it was well, well, inside, artificially, yes, but without fire protection and... And, and I understand there was some kind of cladding on the outside of the building, is that right? Some kind of plastic cladding on the outside? Yes, there are. Did, did you see that? Was that on fire? Uh, it wasn't on fire when I went out, no. So obviously you don't know how long you might be stuck here. You could be here for the long haul. I don't know. I don't know. We've been out of my building now since quarter past one. So it's been for about four hours. So no school for you today then? Mm -mm. <laughs> well, it has a plus side, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he loves his school. Yeah, I'm in yeah. secondary school now. I'm in year seven. He loves his school. OK, well, we're very pleased to, to hear that you both managed to get out of the... The, the building safely. We can only hope that others manage to as well. Rooks and T, thank you for thank talking you to us. You're welcome. So there you have it, just a story there from a couple of the survivors from this tower block who managed to get out. They said that they were not uh, awoken by the emergency services. Having said that, it was very early on in the, the incident itself, just about 10 past one. They were all arriving, so I'm sure that at some point they would have been knocking on doors, trying to get people down from that uh, building. But as you heard from Rooks as well there, uh, there was a lot of smoke, even at that early stage, filling all the stairwells, so it might have been difficult to get people down safely from the building at that stage. We're here, as I say, in the Harrow Club. You can see uh, more people arriving, uh, being evacuated to here and other clubs around the area at the moment. OK, Mark, thank you very much. So Mark there, was a, he was talking to um, people who'd been evacuated from that building. He was in the Harrow Club. I just want to let you know that St Clement and St James's Church has also opened its door to people who've been evacuated and to other locals, so that's St Clement and St James's Church. So as day breaks, as we speak to more residents, more um, we're hearing from people who are on the scene first, who are in that building. Um, I just want to bring you this from Jody Martin. He's been talking to the Press Association. And he said, I grabbed an axe from the fire truck. It looked like there was a bit of confusion about what to do. He was, he was on the scene as the first fire engine was arriving. Um, uh, he ran through the building looking for a fire escape and couldn't see any noticeable fire escapes around the building. A lot of debris falling down. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, it is 6 o'clock. You're watching Sunrise. We are live in West London at the scene of a devastating fire. As the sun has come up, we can see the full extent of this fire. This is a tower block, Grenfell Tower, an apartment block, 120 flats in this building, 27 storeys tall. And at about quarter to one o'clock this morning, police were called to reports of a fire. It was completely engulfed in flames just hours ago. The emergency services say they are treating a number of people for exposure to fire smoke inhalation. London Ambulance says we were called at 1.29 a.m. to reports of a fire at Lancaster West Estate that's in West London. It's near the Westfield Shopping Centre near Notting Hill, Holland Park, White City. Um, we've sent a number of, this is London Ambulance Services, we've sent a number of resources to the scene, including our hazardous area response team and over 20 ambulance crews. We're working closely with London Fire Brigade and the Met Police, with our priority being to get people to safety and ensure they receive the medical help as quickly as possible. Our initial priority is to assess the level and nature of injuries and ensure those in the most need are treated first and taken to hospital. More information will follow when we have it. Jonathan Samuels is live in West London for us.
Kimberly, many thanks. Yes, we are live at the scene of uh, this uh, horrendous fire which began in the early hours of this morning in the Grenfell Tower Block here in Kensington on the Lancaster West Estate. Now, as you're looking at the Tower Block, you can see that it is a smouldering ruin. There are still some flames on some of the floors, uh, but certainly uh, a lot of the fire now seems to have burnt itself out. Uh, the fire service was called here at about 5 to 1 this morning. Uh, in total, 200 firefighters have been on the site. And I have to tell you, this part of West London now is incredibly busy. All the narrow streets around here are jammed with fire trucks, with ambulances, Ambulances with police cars. Many roads are blocked. There is uh, uh, the thick stench of smoke in the air, and not only that, but a huge amount of ash and debris uh, is covering the streets here of uh, Notting Hill, West London, and uh, Kensington. Now, what we don't know are how many people have been affected by this. We know that hundreds live in the tower block. We know that many, thankfully, have managed to escape unhurt. We know that some have been injured. They've been treated at the scene. What we don't know are how many people were trapped inside and unable to escape, if indeed any. It's a 27-storey building. Uh, as you can see, it dominates the skyline here in West London. If you know this part of London, it's very close to the A40, the West Way, which will be a familiar road for people driving into the centre of town from the west of London. It's near the Westfield Shopping Centre, of course, which uh, was built about 10 years ago, a very popular uh, destination for shoppers near the old uh, BBC headquarters at White City. And as I'm looking around, there are people in their pyjamas, uh, there are people looking at this tower block just utterly shocked uh, that this had happened so quickly. We know that the fire began in the early hours and it wasn't long before uh, the whole building was ablaze. Uh, what we're hearing is that it was refurbished at the end of last year. That refurbishment finished in around October, November, December time. Uh, the whole of the block was cladded, uh, basically to make it look a little bit more attractive. Cladding was put onto the outside. A lot of work was done to refurbish it inside as well. And we're told that uh, some gas works were conducted inside. We're trying to get confirmation uh, about that. But as I say, fire crews still very much on the scene, trying to do what they can. But of course, the fire has been so intense, the heat has been so intense that many fire crews simply haven't been able to get close enough. What I want to do is bring in our correspondent, Ashish Joshi, who's been here now for some time. Uh, just describe to me the scene that you saw, Ashish, when you arrived. Well, it was pitch black. It was uh, about 2.30, maybe quarter to three in the morning. And you could see the fire, Jonathan, from miles around. I mean, I got here. There was a police cordon already in place. There were hundreds of residents, some of whom who had been evacuated from Grenfell Tower, others from nearby housing estates, just standing around in muted shock and disbelief. There are people who have left everything they own inside Grenfell Tower, escaped with their lives. I spoke to one resident uh, uh, who thinks the fire started in the flat next to his. He was woken by a neighbour who said one of his electrical appliances was on fire. And this resident told me that he had been involved in a fire in this tower before. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He said he told his wife, grab his children, and they ran for their lives. And that seems to be the story of the night, people uh, leaving as quickly as they could. Now, I have to tell you, for the last hour or so, I've been watching with other shocked residents a man who has been trapped on about the 11th, I don't know exactly what floor, but about the 11th floor, and he's been pacing up and down inside on a mobile phone, coming to the window. Now, he's been there for a considerable amount of time, but what seems to happen by a, a complete fluke is the fire has engulfed all the area on top and to the side of his flat but he has a corner flat and the fire and emergency services were dousing the side of the flat with water i haven't seen him for the last 20 25 minutes so i'm hopeful 
that he has been rescued and he's been brought out. Other things to tell you, uh, I was standing around watching this and a group of residents, mostly women, was screaming with delight. A five-year-old girl had been evacuated. Uh, we don't know with her parents, but certainly she'd been pulled out after the fire had been raging for about two hours. So certainly the emergency service is doing all they can now. Yeah, utterly terrifying to think that there may still be people uh, inside. And Ashish, uh, we have been speaking to some of those residents who were rescued and indeed people who watched these flames going up. Uh, let's have a listen. Just before 1 a.m., we got a huge knock on the door. Um, my wife and I was awake, our two kids were asleep. Um, it was a strange knock, so I kind of just went for it, you know, just find out what it was about. There was no one at the end of the door. When I opened it, there was no one else. There was no one there. It's just a lot of smoke. It's just dark. And I slammed the door shut. Didn't even lock it or anything. I just slammed it shut. So there's no more smoke coming in because I knew I don't want the kids to suffocate and stuff. It's just too much. So this is the second incident that I personally have been in where there was fire. So I thought, well, this just something I, I knew we had to handle. So I just got towels. I waited it out before I walked walk the kids out with wet towels. In my hand, screaming down the whole hallway to the wife, she's in the living room. So I screamed out, I said, hey, there's fire, like, literally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding, there's fire, like, get out. People on the left-hand side of the building were screaming out, help us, sticking their heads out of the window. People were waving phones for, you know, for invisibility because there's so much smoke coming around right now. The left-hand side caught smoke really fast, I think it's due to the, it's hard to speculate now, but I would say it's the, the cladding and all these fixes is what caused the fire to just erupt. And Under do you know hour, if there are people still inside? We do know. We do know there's How people. You know? We've received phone calls. We've received phone calls. We've got family and friends still in there. There is someone trapped in the 81. A five-year-old girl. We wish her all the best, man. Honestly, man. We wish her all the best. There's still some families coming out. There is more fire and more firefighters going in there with the oxygen tanks. Yeah and uh, first aid kids and all sorts of stuff. I, I wasn't woken up by the alarms at all. They were very, very quiet the alarms. I was in bed, I was on the verge of falling asleep and I smelled plastic. I've got up, I've looked around the flat, checked the plugs, everything was okay. I went to the kitchen to smoke a cigarette. I've opened the window and I heard some woman saying it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger. So I've gone out to the hallway, I've looked through the spire hole, I see smoke everywhere, I've opened the door and the neighbours were there, the people screaming, the firemen said, get down the stairs, so I've grabbed the little girl Grabbed my girlfriend, ran out of the house, just in a pair of boxer shorts and a dressing gown. Someone gave me these clothes. And then this is it, and now we're here. What, what time was that? How many hours? Um, it must have been about one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What floor did you live on? Seventh. Seventh floor. And it started on the fourth. And so we had to come down the stairs, and as we was going past, the, 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 the smoke was, it was disgusting. It's all the plastic on the building that's done it. Did you see, did you see a lot of people evacuating? Yeah, I did, but also I, I heard a lot of screams and I could see, after I got outside, I was looking up and I could see people banging on the windows and there was fire all around them. It was horrendous. Well, some of the terrifying stories there of people caught up uh, in this huge fire in West London. You can only imagine, can't you, how utterly terrifying it must be to know that you're high up in that tower block. You can smell smoke, you know it's on fire, and yet you're wondering how on earth you're going to get out if you're going to get out. So some of the stories there from those trapped inside. I should tell you, as uh, you were listening to that, we can hear uh, bangs and pops coming from the building. We know that debris is falling off it and of course one of the real fears is that it could collapse uh, in this densely populated part of London and as a result of that uh, some of the homes around the tower block are being evacuated by police. I just want to bring in uh, someone who saw the fire uh, in the early hours this morning, lives very close. This is uh, Joanna Connor and her son Erin. Uh, thanks for being with us Joanna. So just explain to me what you saw first thing this morning. Yeah, um, so at about 2am we were woken up by screaming, sirens and then helicopters and came outside and were confronted with the building that was completely engulfed in flames. Um, it was a real shock and there were hundreds of people lining the streets. Um, we could still hear screaming from the buildings. People were milling around sort of um, in shock and crying. Um, and one of our neighbours, um, her sister, husband and children were in, in the building. In fact, that was the gentleman that was speaking to you earlier that said that the, it was his neighbour's house that caught fire. 
Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's close to us. We've got neighbours whose families are in that were in that building. Uh, one of our neighbours' uh, family member is still not accounted for. Um, so it's rocked this community. Um, and the, the, I mean, as far as I'm aware, uh, the fire started on the fourth floor and within 15 minutes, the entire building was ablaze from bottom to top. Um, there had been refurbishments last year to the building, interior and exterior, and, and a sort of a, a, a fascia, a coating, had been put around the block to make it look more appealing. Um, and, I mean, if you look at the fire, you can see it's unprecedented. I've never seen anything like that in my life. And residents are asking questions about the safety of that material around the building. So we're all hopeful that there's going to be an investigation into that. Yeah, I mean, obviously we haven't spoken yet to uh, the council. We're, we're going to do that and get their, their thoughts on this uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 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 horrific sense. blaze. We know that we can still see flames actually from uh, one going, of the floors that's still going. Six hours later. Or yeah, have you, have you uh, and, and you were I'm saying that you've spoken to, to, to friends and, and people who are living yeah, inside yeah, and, and yeah. so far they're, they're, they're all okay? Well, no, as I say, no, yeah. Family members that are, or people that they know quite closely that are still trapped in the building that we know of anyway maybe they're in hospital because we chatted to someone that they said that they would contact us when they have found out all the names of the people in hospital but still right now there are still going there are still explosions of the gas pipes there's still black smoke from the newly just came fire it's it's horrendous I've, I've lived here eight years of my life I've lived here pretty much all my life and I've never seen anything as bad as this I've had a house fire before it wasn't as bad as this I've seen people like Trellick Tower in Goldbourne their house fires but because it was a like it was stone it was the house was made of stone how it wouldn't be able to get out but because well, it is plastic well, it but apparent, General, General, apparently one of your school friends is unaccounted for yeah one of my school friends uh, is my gone missing attends... a 13 year old girl um, uh, called Jessica she's gone missing she lived in the house next to it well, we can only hope, can't we, that uh, that people have managed to get out and, yeah, uh, and are safe. And a, a, a neighbour's family member is unaccounted for as well. But as, as we say, um, leisure centre, certain centres have been taking people in from the tower Queens block. Are. Some people are obviously at the hospital, so we're really, really hopeful that they're OK. Uh, my son attends the school right next to the building. And, the same material um, and that school is made of the, apparently it's made of the same material that, that coated that block. Yeah, so, you know, we're concerned on, about so. that as well. Yeah, certainly, um, you know, this is no all going to form today, so. form part of uh, uh, of the investigation once once the fire is, is finally out. What's yeah. it like inside? We know that uh, these blocks have been up now for, for, for many years. Yeah. Uh, things are very different now in, in, in how uh, estates are, are built and designed. You've been inside. What, what no. about what, what, you've I've not never been inside. actually been inside. Um, have you been inside? Yeah, there okay. was. There's a nursery bottom floor, so the actual bottom. There was, a, as I know, as I recall, there was a gym on top of it, and that was, took up about three floors. And then above that is where the houses start. And apparently, from residents that live there, they have put three floors under the ground. Mm. But hopefully, them floors have been safe. Um, I heard that it's only gone to the second floor, the fire. So the bottom floor and the the, the bottom floor is safe. Apparently, uh, the, the nursery hasn't been set on fire. It only got to the it got to the second. Started on maybe maybe on the second floor. Uh, I yeah. mean, according to some residents who live in the block that I've been speaking to, um, there was only one route of escape, um, the stairwell, fire well. Um, uh, uh, allegedly, there were um, gas pipes that were fitted into that stairwell yeah. that allegedly uh, residents had protested yeah, against previously. Did. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that's a concern as well. Yeah, it's certainly something that we're you know we're, we're, we're going to find out in the coming hours and days. Yeah. Uh, what, what has struck me is uh, what a remarkable community this is. Oh, well, um, yeah. Everyone has come out on the streets to help people who are affected. Yeah. Uh, water, food has been provided to people who are literally yeah. in their pyjamas and dressing gowns. A neighbour's taken in um, one of the residents' Two children, a uh, couple of kids, yeah. because they needed to get up to the council to find out, you know, wh where are they going to be placed. I gave them the, the, the cab fare to get up there because obviously they've left everything inside there and just got out because their lives come first. Of course. Um, yes, I mean, the aftermath of that is, you know, you've got, what, 200 families displaced now. They need rehousing. They, I mean, everybody's going to be in shock, traumatised. Of course, we're doing as much as we can as a community. This is a community. It's not just an area of London. No, of it's a real community. You've got to remember, this is the home of the carnival. Um, so that always brings residents together. So everybody really knows everybody.
everybody around here and we're doing as much as we can to pull together. What have the police told you? Because we know that some uh, areas are going to be evacuated because they're worried now that this building yeah, collapse. could collapse. Absolutely, because you know the fire was raging through the building for a good four or five hours. Strong, so yeah. Um, yeah, and it was so powerful. I mean, I mean it was from our house. And you could you could really feel the heat yeah. just from where we were standing and where you know a, a good few hundred. Um, a few hundred yards away. Uh, the police have said that at this stage they are concerned that the building could collapse, but even then, if it doesn't collapse, please God, um, we may still have to be evacuated at some point yeah, because they, they might have to bring the building down. down. Um, and the dust so, from that, that could be dangerous, getting people's lungs. So the aftermath of this is going to go on for some time to come. Yeah. The impact on this community is un unprecedented. This will go down in history. Yeah, and just as we're watching, actually, we can see that uh, the flames seem to have got stronger in the last few moments since we've been talking. A big lump of yeah. the building just fell yeah. off then. Um, this could go on for, it could go on for the rest of the day, couldn't it? it? Because really the, could. what's it really interesting, could. the fire crews aren't up on ladders, they're not up on platforms. No. The heat is so intense. Yeah, I, I know. And I mean, when the um, fire brigade was sort of coming backwards and forwards to get equipment, you could literally feel the heat off of them. You could smell the fire off of them. Yeah, um, it was it was really intense. I've got to say that the um, firefighters are incredibly brave. Um, they've risked their lives to get people out of there and they've been fighting all night long. Um, the emergency services were, you know, as good as they could possibly be. I believe that um, one officer said he's come in from as, as far Kate as um, Harrow. Harrow yes. So they've, they've had to pull resources from all over London to fight this fire. Yeah, just cord off but of course, everywhere. you've got to remember as well, around a tower block, you get a lot of wind. Um, you know, it really picks up. Even on a hot day, you walk around there and you're cold. The yeah. wind is whipping around. So, of course, that's going to have some effect on, on yeah, fanning nice the flames flame. as well. And then we don't know what kinds of materials are inside the building. You can hear the popping sometimes. There, that, that was um, a lot more intense at the beginning of the fire. Yeah. So we're, we're thinking that might have been little gas explosions from, um, you know, gas cookers or, or whatever. Them, so. But apparently this all started because of a, a refrigerator. A domestic appliance, yeah, could have domestic started appliance. it. Okay, Joanna and Aaron, thank you so much thank for you. your time and uh, best of luck if you do have to be uh, evacuated later. I hope things go well and uh, I hope you hear from those uh, friends inside. Yes, um, so th off. thanks for that, for that for the moment. We are hearing in the last few moments that 30 people have been taken to hospital so far as a result of this blaze. We're hearing that from uh, the West London Ambulance Service. They've been taken to five hospitals uh, in the area. So uh, an extremely busy morning for paramedics and uh, ambulance crews here and uh, Ashish is back with me now and one thing that strikes you when you come to this part of London Ashish is that it is densely packed there's a huge amount of housing a huge amount of flats and estates and it's actually been quite difficult for the fire crews the ambulance crews and the police to get close because uh, uh, the roads are uh, heavily congested a lot of parking uh, and it's not the easiest area to navigate by a long stretch. No, really narrow streets, densely packed, lots of um, uh, housing estates, all centred around the, the old tower blocks as they were put up um, b back in the 60s and 70s. There's a school, an academy, right directly underneath that tower block. Um, lots of concerns from residents I've been speaking to throughout the night about the way the cladding was put up on the building. They said it used to be just concrete. There had been fires there before which had broken out, but had been contained to one or two floors. Now this one, you can see from our picture here, it's gone right to the very top of the, the 27th floor. Speaking in the last couple of minutes, Jonathan, to uh, residents here, and they tell me more people have been evacuated. So that's some good news, that people are being found, they are being taken away. And I, I try to go back to find out what had happened to the man I was telling you about earlier, who was seen at his window pacing up and down. He isn't there anymore, and I'm hopeful that the emergency services have got to him. They were certainly dousing the side of his uh, flat with water, and I saw a crane going up earlier, but that's as much as I saw other people who were following the emergency or the crisis. I've been speaking to them and said, has he got out? And they said they simply don't know. So fingers crossed that he has been reached. Other people have been reached. I told you a little earlier on about uh, 
these women who were screaming with delight when one of their friends said that a little five-year-old girl had been pulled out, she'd been taken away. Also, I ought to stress that you were talking about the communities and the packed streets, the housing estates, huge North African community here, huge Somali community. That is significant because a lot of people were awake at the time because they are observing Ramadan and because they had broken their fasts earlier in the evening or had they just eaten, they were up, they were awake and that might have saved hundreds of lives. We don't know, but certainly speaking to residents like Safi earlier on, she's from that community. She says there are so many uh, Muslim communities who live in this particular part of West London observing Ramadan who would have been awake at one o'clock in the morning. If they were awake, it would have been easier to evacuate them. So certainly that would have worked in their favour. And what about these reports, Ashish, that we've heard from uh, some eyewitnesses of, of lights being shone in the top floors in the early hours, maybe torches or uh, lights on mobile phones, people perhaps signalling for help? Yeah, the, the, the eyewitness or the witness account are very difficult to listen to because we're, we're talking about people who are trapped inside a tower block, 27 storeys high. Uh, again, going back to Safi, when I spoke to her, early on um, when, when this this fire began she said she lives a block away she says she could hear people screaming so you think how terrifying that is you could hear people screaming trying to get access to other people who are still trapped inside because the difficulty with this is is if you're if you're trapped on one of the higher floors and the stairwells are on fire, how do you get out? Uh, we don't know what the provisions for fire uh, exist inside. We've spoken to the leader of the council, and I have to say, when, when he was speaking to Sky News, there were a lot of residents who surrounded him, quite clearly emotional, distressed, but very angry. Big question marks were being raised about the level of safety within that particular tower block. Yeah, and we've heard, uh, again, of reports, and we uh, need to corroborate this, about fire alarms perhaps not going off immediately. Some, somebody I spoke to who had been evacuated who thinks that the fire started in a flat next to his said there were no alarms. There were no alarms. Somebody said there were no sprinkler systems. We, we ought to stress we don't know how much of this is true and how much of it isn't. The emotion is running high. There are clearly so many people who are distressed who have seen everything they own go up in flames. They have nothing left except the clothes that they are standing in. Uh, the leader of the council said there are community centres which are opening up to take these people in. Obviously, the priority for the moment for the emergency service uh, people who are working there is to make sure everyone they can get to does get outside. And then once they're outside, the, cares and, the care and provision is in place to support them. I ought to say that there was a very touching scene a little earlier on when there were fire crews who were coming away from the fire because of a change in shift, they would have been working there for about three hours. There were, there were a group of youths who were standing by who started saluting, clapping and patting these firefighters on the back as they walked away from this. So that, that will give you an indication of just how much support there is for not just the emergency services, but how much the community here will be fearing the worst and hoping that they've been able to do their jobs tonight. Yeah, no, uh, uh, we've got to certainly praise, uh, praise the firefighters' efforts. They really have done a sterling job. Uh, Ashish, for, for the moment, thank you very much. Do stay with us, though, if you can. Uh, we know 200 firefighters have been involved in this uh, blaze, trying to bring it under control. Uh, as you can see, probably fire engines uh, dotted all around the area. Every street has got fire crews, ambulances and police on standby or doing what they can. Uh, Mark White is our correspondent. Correspondent uh, on the other side of the tower. He's got a different perspective uh, on what's going on here. Mark, what can you see? Talk us through it. Uh, well, where I am, again, just one of the streets, uh, just not too far from one of the local community centres where local residents are being cared for at the moment, people that have been evacuated from the tower block and surrounding buildings. I'm just going to step out of the way and let our cameraman get you uh, a shot of the side of the building. It's still very heavily clad in smoke and every now and again uh, eruptions of flames from some of the upper windows. Um, so this is still a fire, certainly on the upper floors, uh, that is not under control. And that's to be expected because effectively the hose reels uh, that the fire brigade have got uh, trained on that building are effective to about halfway up the 27-storey building. Any higher than that 
uh, and they're struggling. Uh, there are high-rise water systems normally that operate within these buildings. We don't know just how affected they have been by the fire itself and whether firefighters are managing to sort of work their way up stair by stair, uh, flat by flat from the bottom up. Uh, you would imagine that if it's safe, they would certainly be trying to do that. But we have no indication that that building is at all safe. In fact, every belief that it might not be too safe, given that a lot of the neighbouring buildings around here have been evacuated, the residents cared for in a number of community centres around here. Uh, Jonathan, I was speaking to uh, a grandmother, uh, Rukus, uh, Rooks uh, Mamumbu uh, in the community centre uh, just about 15-20 uh, minutes ago and she had quite a dramatic story to tell of how she uh, was woken about 10 past 1, she smelt the smoke, uh, saw that you know the building was just engulfed in smoke through all the corridors. Uh, she went outside and saw the police officer who shouted uh, fire to her and told her to get out. Uh, we can listen to what Rooks told us. She was with her grandson, T. We can actually talk now to a couple of residents who were evacuated from the tower block itself. Uh, Rook, Rooks uh, uh, Mamudu and her grandson, T. Uh, Rooks, tell us, um, you, you were in the tower block itself. When did you become aware that something was happening? At about one o'clock. I woke up to pee and I always open my windows. Then I heard some unusual noise outside. So I peeped. Then I saw a lot of fire engines, policemen everywhere. So I stretched, I said to one of them, officer, what's going on? He said, fire, get out. So we're were the police not actually knocking on your door? Nobody knocked that? on my door. I woke to pee. Then I quickly woke my, my grandson, gave him his dressing gown. Then we ran downstairs. And that's where we are now. And, I mean, how large was the fire at that stage? There was smoke everywhere. I inhaled some smoke when I got out of the building. So it means it was, ex it was already at a big extent before I woke up. Maybe it was even the smoke that woke me up. Uh, how concerned are you that it wasn't the emergency services that, that, that actually managed to knock you up, that you came up yourself, that you, you woke up yourself? I woke to pee. Nobody woke me. Nobody. And, and, I asked questions from the window. And, and T, obviously, you were uh, asleep in your bed. Just tell yeah. us what happened. Um... Grandy woke me up. She said there was fire. I put on my shoes, my dressing gown, and went out. Um, there were lots of uh, fire trucks. Smoke. Lots of smoke. Um, and all the emergency services were already yeah, arriving. Yeah, such as ambulances and police. Everything was there. They were yeah, there. There were 200. And uh, We've heard reports that some people might have been trapped in the building. Do you think that's possible? Very possible, because the staircase, where, when we were coming out, was already clouded with smoke. So if they couldn't go through the staircase, they can't go through the lift, there's no balcony for anybody to jump, of course they are there. Well, I mean, we certainly know from what you've told us that even at that early stage, just after one o'clock, uh, there was smoke everywhere? About 10 minutes past one. And, and that smoke was, was it filling the stairwells? It filled the stairways. It was smoky when we got out. So, I mean, it's possible if people were on the upper floors, it, it might have been difficult for them to get down. Yes, definitely. Well, you're here now, obviously, in a place of, of safety. They're looking after you? <sighs> well, when we came in, there was some bananas, apple. Somebody gave us tea, a cup of tea. Fine, I mean, they are doing their best. But the other thing I would like to say is when we were outside waiting for evacuation to this place, we got a taxi, the whole street were blocked. People were coming to look at what is going on and the people escaping from there could not have a way out. 
uh, yeah, we know that the fire brigade had difficulty reaching the scene as well because yes. of all the. It's difficult calls. for them to reach anywhere. And you were telling me uh, a little earlier, Luke, Rooks, that you, you've been in that building just six months, but it had been recently refurbished? Well, so we were told that it was refurbished. My flat is a new flat, which they said how many millions, I don't know, the council is newly refurbished. And it was well, well, inside, artificially, yes, but without fire protection and... And, and I understand there was some kind of cladding on the outside of the building, is that right? Some kind of plastic cladding on the outside? Yes, there are. Did, did you see that? Was that on fire? Uh, it wasn't on fire when I went out, no. So obviously you don't know how long you might be stuck here. You could be here for the long haul. I don't know. I don't know. We've been out of my building now since quarter past one. So it's been for about four hours. So no school for you today then? Mm -mm. <laughs> well, it has a plus side, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he loves his school. Yeah, I'm in yeah. secondary school now. I'm in year seven. He loves his school. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, we're very pleased to, to hear that you both managed to get out of the, the, the building safely. We can only hope that others managed to as well. Rooks and T, thank you for thank talking you to us. You're welcome. So there you have it. Just a, a story there from a couple of the survivors from this tower block who managed to get out. They said that they were not... Uh, awoken by the emergency services. Having said that, it was very early on in the, the incident itself, just about 10 past one, they were all arriving. So I'm sure that at some point they would have been knocking on doors, trying to get people down from that uh, building. But as you heard from Rooks as well there, uh, there was a lot of smoke, even at that early stage, filling all the stairwells. So it might have been difficult to get people down safely from the building at that stage. We're here, as I say, in the Harrow Club. You can see uh, more people arriving, uh, being evacuated to here and other clubs around the area at the moment. Uh, Mark, we're hearing a little bit more about this uh, tower block. We're learning more as uh, every minute goes by. Uh, there are 120 homes inside, uh, flats uh, inside this block, uh, which was built in 1974. Uh, it was renovated in 2015 and 2016, which goes along with what a lot of uh, residents are telling us and eyewitnesses. Uh, a lot of work was done both inside and outside, including uh, the building being clad, uh, largely to make it look uh, a little bit more attractive. We know that these uh, tower blocks do dominate the skyline uh, in West London. Uh, we're also being told by a spokesperson from uh, Kensington and Chelsea Council that several hundred people uh, lived inside. Uh, Mark, what are you seeing where you are, where we're standing? We can still see flames uh, licking at the building, uh, coming through the windows, which have been blown out now, of course. Are you still seeing flames from the side of the building where you are? Yeah, there, there are still pockets of flames inside the buildings, particularly on the upper floors. Uh, on the lower floors, the fire has pretty much burnt itself out, but uh, inside the building, and of course, uh, an yeah. hour or so ago, they were, the flames were licking out of the windows, but actually uh, inside, further into the flats themselves, there are clearly pockets of flames, and every now and again you see yeah. uh, quite considerable uh, flames erupting from the, the building itself. Uh, it's interesting, you talk about uh, upwards of 300 people inside that building. It will have been a very difficult uh, process to try to knock on all of those doors, 120 flats within that 27-storey building. This fire took hold very quickly. And what that uh, eyewitness was telling me just a short time ago, when she was evacuated from the building, and this was very early on, just about 10 past one, already at that stage, the corridors were filled with smoke. So anyone asking anyone to try and come down a 27 story building if it's if the corridor is filled with smoke well they're, they're probably not going to do that if they do do that there's a 
a high chance they could be overcome by the smoke itself. So in the hours ahead, we will get an idea from the emergency services about whether everyone was brought from that building safely or whether they do fear that some people, particularly in the upper floors, were trapped in there. And if they were, you've got to be very, very concerned for them because you can see from every angle that we're offering you that every single flat, pretty much apart from one lower section, uh, one side of the lower section, two or three flats, pretty much every flat has been absolutely gutted uh, by the flames there. So extremely concerning times for the emergency services. But they can't get in there to, to begin that search until, one, uh, they've managed to ensure that all of the flames have been knocked back, and two, that they can get assurances from structural, uh, structural engineers that there's no danger of collapse within that building. Uh, fire uh, service management, of course, have got a, um, a, a responsibility to ensure that their firefighters, who, of course, are always keen uh, to get in there and, and try and effect a rescue, uh, they've got to ensure that these firefighters are kept safe as well. We know from past incidents, the most famous, of course, being uh, the Twin Towers uh, terror attack, when uh, an hour or two into that attack, those buildings collapsed one at a time, firefighters running in and desperately trying to lead people to safety. Um, so with that in mind, with the possibility uh, that there could be a weakened infrastructure within that tower block. Uh, the fire service will be uh, working their way up there when they know it's safe to do that. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much for now, Mark. Well, if you're just uh, joining us, we're live in West London where there has been a horrific fire overnight in a tower block. Uh, we're here in uh, the borough of Kensington and Chelsea in West London where a tower block uh, caught fire in the early hours of this morning. We're going to show you some of the pictures now from overnight and you can get a real sense of just how fierce this blaze was. Uh, this is the Grenfell Tower on the Lancaster West Estate, uh, a tower block which really dominates the skyline here in West London. Uh, we know that there are 120 flats in this building. Uh, we know that uh, the fire brigade were called at about five to one this morning. The ambulance service shortly after that and the fire really did take hold extremely quickly. Uh, I want to speak now to someone who uh, lives inside that block and managed miraculously to escape the fire this morning. Uh, Mehmet is with me now. Just talk me through what happened. Uh, well, it's about just before 1 a.m., um, we were eating and just about to go to bed when there was a sudden knock on the door. Um, I rushed to the door, but there was no one else on the other, on the, on the other side. It was smoke, it was horrific, just slammed the door shut. I knew immediately what situation it was, so what I'd done is I'd wear up some towels and immediately notified my wife, said, let's fire, we need to get out of here, you know, just picked up some towels, wrapped it around the kids and heads, barely had time to put shoes on, it's just stumbled on one over another, it's just went out the room, just evacuated as soon as we could. It was really like traumatizing. There was people down the stairs, there's some people carrying luggages, just elderly, there was disabled, there was kids. It was it was really like terrifying. It was just Incredible to get out of there, to be honest with you. It was shocking. It was, it was too much. Um, there was some security barriers in uh, by the bottom of the stairs where we got stuck. We couldn't get out of the building because we, you know, we, you need a key fob, and luckily we had a fob. By the time we come out, we were the first maybe 10 families that were out, and there, there was some people rushing back in to try and notify more people. There was no alarm. There was no bell. There was no sense of um, um, urgency in, in a sense. The fire brigade that was there was only about handful. They analyzing the situation. Um, my neighbor was the one who woke us up, um, not woke us up, but you know, knocked on our door. And he said it was his house where the explosion has happened. It was, he said, his fridge exploded. Um, uh, I'm not there to take any more understanding from him. I just knew, you know, we need to get out of there. He was barefooted, he was knocking on doors. 
you know, I knocked on several doors on my way there myself, just went down the stairs after that, couldn't take any of the smoke, and we just had to leave because we had kids in our hands. There's people with luggage on the stairs, it was hazardous, it was too much. There was gas pipes that we were very hazardous as well to go through the stairwell because of the gas pipes that were connected there. So we didn't know where the explosions or these smoke and fire is coming from. So we were just really terrified and the priority was to get everyone out of there as soon as we could. Um, once we were out, um, we obviously kept the distance from the building, but the, within under an hour, half of the building was already covered in, in, in flames. It, it's, people are still trapped in there. People are definitely still trapped in there. We've had some calls. There's, there's people who are, have been tweeting and saying they're still alive and they're still in their room, locked in their room. I heard of a kid that is in his room still trapped. We're still waiting to hear uh, the very latest on uh, how many people have managed to, to escape. We know 30 people are in hospital, five hospitals in London. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you trying to get in touch with, with neighbours, with There's other people? Uh, 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 and their yeah. phones are ringing, but you're not getting a reply? Yeah, well, phones, everything we left in there. So some family members and friends, we can't even get in touch with them because... It's no means. Some a lot of people would have left their belongings in there. It's just, it's just, it's, it's still, it's still trying to try and make some sense of this. We, there is um, the rugby centre and there's Harrow Club that we got to go and look for family and friends. Uh, but you're remarkably people. composed, given what's happened. I can only imagine the the terror and the fear going through your mind when you were grabbing your kids and trying much, to get out. What, what floor do you live on? We li I live on, on the fourth floor, and the fire started on the fourth floor. The fire started next door to us. So we had a very condensed sense of smoke right in front of us, right at our doorstep. It was really horrific. Um, just... I just pray for the people that are left inside and the people that are still looking for the loved ones. To be honest with you, we, 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 we got very lucky. We got extremely, extremely, extremely lucky. Um, our thoughts and our prayers are with the people that are left in that, inside the building. Um, we wish them all the best and we hope that they survive. That's it. Of course, of course, we all we're all praying for that. Um, given that you live on the on the fourth floor and it was relatively straightforward to to get down the stairs, you're in no doubt that people higher up won't have been as lucky. No, no, they wouldn't have been because the stairway is, like I said, is um, it's riddled with gas pipes. So all these explosions that's been happening from one o'clock onwards it could be either stairwell there's a stay put policy at Grenfell Tower when there's a fire incident which says to stay put where you may be at a time of um, discovering a fire and the stay put policy would be would be keeping people in their places supposedly some people are trapped the smoke is too much before before anyone dies from the burns the smoke itself and the inhalation of the smoke is too much, it's really condensed. And there is a ventilation system also in Grenfell Tower where the smoke is being constantly ventilated outwards and up towards the top of the building. So a lot of smoke would constantly be just getting dragged up and getting pulled up. And so the people at the top would most definitely be stranded. Then the fire brigade were not able to, the response units were not able to immediately get here until about half past one. So. We didn't see the, the cranes or the, the ladders or anything go up. From my knowledge, according to uh, House 16, where the fire started, it's an explosion from his fridge. Now, according to some fire brigade, it's electrical fire. And according to the, you know, the gentleman whose house where the fire has begun, it's, it's due to his fridge. So this is all electrical fire. It was harder to... Uh, to wrap the hair in head around it and get on with it. They had to analyze, report, and find out what was going on first. But it did start off just at the height of a tree, the fire, because that was level four where the fire happened. Before you know it, 
he took the whole right hand side of the building which is towards the KAA which is the Kenston Aldrich Academy and at that point there was a lot of people on the left hand side of the building opening their windows screaming out help some lights were coming on some people were sleeping you know so they were not aware there was no alarm the alarm did not go off this is something I'm stressing on the alarm did not go off to notify the people and the tenants of Grenfell Tower the, the bell did not go off there should have been a sense of a bell there was no bell this is something I have to stress there was no bell I, I am lucky and my wife and my kids are lucky we are alive simply because the gentleman where the fire has died he was courteous enough to knock on everyone on his floor knock on the doors and try and get them out but there was no bell we did not hear a bell up until about half past one when we were outside the building so this is i don't know what is going on but to be honest with you it's just well it's certainly uh, going to form part of the investigation and we are going to speak to uh, the council shortly uh, just finally how are the children now how's your wife my, my wife is in shock she's in a, she's in a, she's in a proper shaky state um my two kids, the state in which they woke up was just incredibly like shocking, but they are safe, they are all, they are alive. There's some people who, who whose loved ones are missing and some in rare circumstances. Really truly I'm very grateful. Um, like I said, this is a moment to reflect for those who are trapped in there, those whose Lives are in a very difficult position. Well, Mehmet, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us, and we wish you the very best of luck uh, and uh, the same to your family as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, someone there who lived on the fourth floor who managed to escape, thankfully, with his uh, family in the early hours of this morning, but as we heard there, utterly utterly terrifying uh, trying to get out with uh, thick smoke and knowing that flames are coming up the building. Now in the last few moments we have spoken to the leader of Kensington and Chelsea Council, uh, Councillor Nick Paget brown This is what he had to say. Well it's clearly an absolutely devastating uh, fire. Um, the emergency services and council support officers uh, have been here for a number of hours trying to support residents who've been evacuated. Uh, but there are still the emergency services working on the uh, on the fire and trying to establish if there are people still in the building. Um, the council is providing support to residents and people who've been uh, evacuated from their homes in nearby centres. And um, I think that's all I can tell you at this stage. Um, clearly, it's a, it, it's an absolutely devastating fire. How many people um, lived in this tower? Do you have any idea? We're, we're establishing that at the moment, but several, several hundred would have been in there. But it's a question of establishing how many people were in there at the time of the fire. And, and what are you doing for the people the who've been evacuated, who've lost everything? Um, we've set up uh, emergency centres nearby, and uh, people have been evacuated to those, where we're providing as much support as we can. Um, and clearly there will be further updates uh, throughout the day on what we're doing to um, support people. Uh, but at the moment, the emergency services have set up a big cordon around the area and uh, it's quite hard to get um, uh, uh, accurate and uh, up-to-date information. Uh, but the council will be doing everything it can to work with uh, residents who've been evacuated. Can I ask, uh, sorry, um, sorry um, Kimberly, um, Nick, this is um, Claudia Lies also at Sky News. Can I just ask, have you spoken to any residents at all? Have you spoken, spoken to anybody who's actually been evacuated? Uh, well, we can see that some people have been evacuated and they're being uh, attended to by the emergency services and I don't think it's appropriate for them to be uh, interrupted by uh, talking to me. Uh, but we will be and the council will be um, providing support to people in the uh, emergency centres as soon as we can. But what I think at the moment the, uh, the uh, main priority is to make the building safe and ensure that residents uh, that we can evacuate are evacuated. What about people inside? Do you know if there's anybody still um, in that building? I don't know. That's a matter for the emergency services, and obviously we're awaiting information uh, as to the latest position. And that's right. You just mentioned it a moment ago. All thoughts and, and all work must be to make it, making sure that this structure is safe. Just looking at the, the severity of this fire, um, what do we know about the structure? Is, are there any worries that it, it could collapse? I'm really not in a position to um, answer any questions about the structure. Um, I don't know. It's clearly been a devastating fire. And uh, we will be awaiting an update from the uh, fire service who's been here. 
Uh, I think the local community, uh, the emergency services have all acted with, with immense uh, uh, speed and provided all the support that they can to those who have been evacuated. But clearly there's a lot more work to do to make the building, uh, to evacuate the building mm. and to establish how safe it is. Uh, this is a very, very uh, severe fire. OK, um, you can talk about the building itself. Um, as a councillor, um, this building has actually just been refurbished just, just a couple of years ago. Had It was a basis of a multi-million pound refurbishment. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. Um, new heating, hot water systems, windows, um, and uh, a major refurbishment. And uh, it, at that point, was uh, uh, was inspected and... Uh, you know, we will have to await the uh, study as to what the cause of this has been. I mean, we've spoken to, to one eyewitness. He was very incre incredibly lucky. He was able to escape um, the building as the fire was breaking out, according to this eyewitness. And he did say, actually, this isn't anything new to the building. He has actually had to um, evacuate the building because of a fire um, before. Do you know of any fires um, at the Grenfell Tower previously? Uh, this is a very major fire. Um, there may have been individual um, flat fires there occasionally are, but I can't comment on that anymore at, at this stage. And I don't really think there's very much more I can say other than to uh, say that the emergency services are doing um, all that they can uh, to secure the building and evacuate people to safety. And there's really little more I can say at this stage. You're back with us on Sky News in North Kensington, just below the Grenfell Tower, which went up in flames at about 12.30 at night. A tragedy beyond words. Hundreds of people who were trapped inside emergency services telling us many have been reached, many have been evacuated. Some were still trapped inside and desperate attempts underway to secure safety for all of those people. Let me talk now and introduce you to Rashida, who is a local resident. You've been following this dreadful I have indeed. Um, event since about midnight. Rashida, tell us what you saw and how you first found out. Well, around 1am I was wide awake um, and I got a phone call from a, a friend who lives literally around the corner and she said, look out the window. And I looked out the window and I could just see the fire just blazing away. And I just, I was in shock. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Because I know a lot of residents that live there. Um, it's highly populated with a lot of families with young children um, and automatically I started thinking about you know uh, family members and friends that actually live in the in the building um, and then I just went into a state of shock for a few minutes and then I quickly just got dressed and ran down here um, at this point just before that actually I heard fire brigades and I, I thought well you know I didn't think much of it because you know once in a while that does happen um, I made my way down around the area and there was lots and lots of people um, and then I found like one of my neighbours her daughter actually lives in the building um, I think on the 18th floor and she has three young children so we were really really panicking at this point and worried um, Have you heard from them? Are they safe? Have, they're, they're actually safe yeah they, they managed to get out the, the building however we've got another family uh, friend um, the parents and three children that we've not heard anything from. Um, they managed to make a phone call um, when it all started and they said that the fire brigade told them to stay inside and that it would be safe for them to, to do so. Um, and then the next call that, you know, the family members have tried to call, no, there's been no answer. So you're still waiting to hear yes, from yeah, this family? Yeah, we're still waiting, we've not heard from them. And, and your brother, you said, lives in the my tower brother block? My lives on the tower block behind, my sister lives on the tower block behind, so she's been watching what's been going on from behind. I've been watching from this side and it's just been horrific. You can just hear the screams, um, which was really disturbing. I've never heard anything like that. You could hear people basically begging for their lives. And it was from further away and you could still hear them quite loudly screaming, help, help, help us, help. Um, and as you looked up, all you could see was just, it, the fire was just raging and raging and raging. It was just uncontrollable. Um, now, we spoke to somebody who said it's possible that the fire started because of a, a fridge catching what, fire. That's what, that's what we heard. It's, it's hard to imagine 
that a fridge fire or an electrical appliance could do so much damage? If, if, if a fridge can do that, I'm, I'm shocked, to be quite honest with you. I mean, there was an issue a few years ago where there was a, a, a small fire um, and there was concerns from the TMO residents um, regarding this building and the, the safety of this building. There was a lot of um, worries and this was one of the worries that one day something like this could happen. I, I've heard another resident, I don't know if it's true, saying there, was, there were gas pipes running along the stairwells. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a, a hazard, put it that way. Um, they recently um, built some, I don't know what the to call cladding. them. Yeah, the cladding. That wasn't there to start off with. But because they've built a new leisure centre and there's a new school, and I think they wanted to make the, the building look a little bit nicer than it actually was, um, and that seemed to kind of just make the fire worse, to be quite frank. I mean... It, it just, it was, there was pieces just falling from all over. There's still debris yes, falling Yes, yeah, now, there it? is, yeah. And, and just explain to people who are watching from elsewhere in the country and around the world, describe this neighbourhood, describe this community. You said to me, everyone knows everyone. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's a very um, diverse um, area. We have all um, nationalities, all religions. We all live peacefully amongst each other. There's, you know, not much crime right like higher than anywhere else in London. I mean, you know, we can walk around safely late at night and stuff like that. But it's a tight community. It's you all know yeah, each other. Yeah, we all know each other. This is the thing. I mean, we all know each other. There's a big high population of Moroccans and for some reason we all live quite close to each other. So literally everybody knows each other. You, you mentioned Moroccans. I know you're observing yes. Ramadan. Yes. There have been a lot of people I've spoken to yeah. tonight yeah. or this morning who have said that because of Ramadan, a lot of people were awake correct, and that yes. would have helped because yeah. they would have been That's up correct. when absolutely. the fire was raging. Yes, so evacuation would have been easy. Yes, absolutely. I mean, most Muslims now observing Ramadan will normally not even go to bed um, until like about two o'clock, two and a half, two, two thirty. Um, until they have their late night um, last meal and do their last um, prayer. So most of the families around here would have been awake. Um, and I think even with the noise, with the helicopters, it would have brought a lot of attention to a lot of residents, non-Muslim as well, that would have thought, well, something sounds like it's going, something's going, uh, something's going on that's obviously not quite normal. So, yes. Tell me again, Rashida, about some of the fears that have been expressed by some of the community groups, some of the actors. Act well, we, 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 we're, we're always worried. I mean, I live on the building just over there, and it's, you know, it's only, what, three storeys high? My windows, for example, they don't open fully. And I've had concerns, um, you know, and little thoughts, never thought it would actually happen, not until seeing this, that what if there was a fire? What would happen? How would we get out of there safely? How would our children get out of there safely, our young children? Because this area has a lot of families, as I said, with, with young children. So that, that was always, you know, a concern of mine, but you, you always think, well, it's never going to happen. But today has made me realise it can happen. I, I, I hope that you hear from the family that was still trapped inside. I hope everyone is safe uh, and our thoughts and prayers are with you. This is Rashida, she's a local resident with friends and family who she thinks might still be trapped inside the tower. Let me hand you over now to Jonathan who is on a different corner closer to Grenfell Tower. Jonathan. Let's just turn sideways and go like that. It's probably going to be easy. Hey? Okay. Well, we are hearing that the uh, fire service is going to uh, give us an update uh, in the next few minutes. We're hoping to hear from a spokesperson from the fire service that have been dealing now uh, with this fire for a number of hours. Uh, 200 firefighters, we understand, are in this part of West London. 40 firefighters as well and we know that uh, many people have been taken to hospital. We've had a statement uh, from the ambulance service. This is from the London Ambulance Service NHS Trust. Uh, now we received this uh, a few minutes ago. It's an update from the Director of Operations Stuart Crichton. He says we can confirm that we've taken 30 patients to five London hospitals following the incident at the Lancaster West Estate. We've declared a major incident and continue to work closely with other emergency services at the scene. We have more than 20 ambulances, ambulance crews here as well as our hazardous area response team and trauma teams from London's Air Ambulance who travel to the scene by car. Our priority is to assess the level and nature of injuries and ensure those in the most need are treated first and taken to hospital. So we know there have been at least 30 people injured. We don't know whether anyone remains trapped inside the building.